All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite show on YouTube, Raw Law Unfiltered, with your favorite host on the internet, the DUI Guy Plus. Today, we are going to be doing something very, very special. Do you remember when we covered the story of what the hails with the rogue judge grudge or grudge judge? Hashtag buckle up judge the Thomases down in Levy County, Florida. Well, today, uh, after many, many people have reached out to me and they have said, Larry, we need you to look into this as well. Please look into this. Please help them, these people out. Actually, another individual who I'm representing, again, this is not attorney-client confidentiality breach because he breached it himself on his channel, Craig Hendry, Hendry Live, shout out to you, brother. He told me to contact these guys for public safety. Chris and Tiffany are going to be joining me in just a few seconds. They are backstage right now, okay? But before we get started, before we get this show on the road, we have to do just a little bit of a preview, right? If you all read the description, it's in the description below. It's a very, very long description. These are not my words. These are Chris's words. He sent this to me in an email. I just modified it to make it sound more, you know, appropriate because he's using pronouns like I, when I went, when I did, you know, et cetera. So I just kind of modified it slightly. And I'm sure Chris will attest to the fact that this is almost word for word his entire email when he comes on in a minute. Um, I just wanted to bring him on because I want him to tell the story. Uh, I know he's limited. We already, we already kind of talked about this. He's limited in, in how much he can cover and how much he can say because he's got not one, not two, not three, not four, but five active cases uh, across, let's see, I think it's uh, Mead, 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 and Mead. They're all, in, they're all in Mead. So sorry, across one county. They have five different cases, four of them misdemeanors, one felony case. And one of them is actually involving another YouTuber, allegedly, J.J. Scarborough, who uh, is a regular, I believe, on this channel called Fraudit Wrangler or something like that. I don't know. Michael Kaiser is the, the, the official name, but I don't know. Chris will tell you all, all about it. This is me just giving you a little bit of a preview just so that you can understand what is happening here, okay? So without further ado, allow me to introduce for public safety, Chris. Chris, how are you? I'm doing great, Larry. Thank you for having us. Uh, my girlfriend just stepped to go get another another uh, phone holder here. This one's going dead. But uh, I'm doing great, Larry. Thank you for having us up. I'm pretty excited to to tell this whole story to everyone and anyone and everyone. It's okay. crazy. So I'm going to give you the floor, as I always do with my guests. I like to kind of sit back. I will guide you if at any point I feel like you may be deviating a little too much or whatever. So the floor is yours, Chris. Tell us what happened. Let's start with the beginning. When, when October, what, last year, right? 17th, of October 17th of last year, um, I had been facing a, a really strange case, which we won't get into, but it's not a real big deal. Just a little misdemeanor case from um, Hardin County, Kentucky. And in that, I needed records. I needed a copy of my actual records from, from my cases in my lifetime, all the way back to 1999. So there was a, uh, a record that should have been on file in Meade County, Kentucky, concerning a case that was about me in 1999. Why would so, it be Meade County if it's a Hardin County case? I'm confused. Well, they were using uh, some, they were cherry picking some records out of a case that was in Meade County in 1999. In the Hardin County case, they were doing that. Understood. So the problem that I had was that they didn't, the, the other attorneys, the prosecutor didn't give us the whole file. And I felt like I needed the whole file to be able to address the allegations that they were using those just few pages of records from. So I wanted the entire, I wanted to copy of the whole file. Mm -hmm. Um, so we went there to get it, <laughs> Tiffany and I, she'll be here in just a second, but, uh, we went there to get it and somebody freaked out over the cameras. Cause you know, I I'm not sure most people that are watching this might not know who I am. Uh, but, but my YouTube channel is basically like a vlog, uh, a video diary of what we are dealing with. This is Tiffany. Hello. Otherwise Hi, known as official misconduct. This is, this is wifey, right? Or uh, well, we're not married, but might as well be. Fair enough. We're not a common law marriage state, so I don't think it really matters. But anyway, hello. <laughs> Even if we girlfriend. were, I'd be okay with it. Hi, Tiffany. Oh, uh, <laughs> so um, uh, where we we went there to get the copy of the records, and apparently somebody had flipped out over us video recording a live stream. Uh, I had a, a I wear a body camera typically whenever I'm vlogging, 
Wait, wait, wait. And Hold then, on. Who, who, uh, who freaked out over you recording? Explain. What, what happened? Well, according to the record, which we're in litigation, so I don't want to get too detailed, but according okay. to the record, there was a call in regards to us entering the, the county public building with cameras immediately okay. when we walked in. Um, so we can only assume that that had to be what the whole thing was about because the chief deputy of the sheriff's department for Meade County, Kentucky, his name's Ray Whited. He come in there hot and heavy, you know, telling us, well, I'm not going to help you because you got cameras in people's face and this, that, and the other, you know, and he was very argumentative and aggressive and it didn't matter what we tried to say to him. The guy was just dead set on escalating the heck out of the whole situation. Uh, I had been told to wait there for the actual clerk, you know, the elected official clerk, uh, because she was going to come and make sure that I had everything I needed. I'd been calling in advance for, for weeks at that time, wanting a copy of the record. And they just, they kept dragging their yeah, feet. No, and Chris, I had, you have to go in person. They don't do anything over the phone. That's a fact. Yeah. I mean, I, even as an attorney, there's no way I can do anything over the phone. That's, but anyway, sorry, go ahead. So you we, show we up, tried. you're being told we tried to by there. email. Are you by yourself or are you with Tiffany? We were together and um, together. she was live streaming streaming for her channel, which is connected to mine. And then I had on my static equipment, you know, my body camera, and then my phone was on its tripod. And um, so anyway, uh, the chief deputy of the sheriff's department, Ray Whited, comes in and I mean, hot and heavy. You know, the guy didn't try to collect any valuable information to understand what was going on. And, and he was just pretty much accusing us of needing to be trespassed for for basically he, he was citing disorderly well we weren't being disorderly other than that there was a, a one little hiccup in which for some reason one of the women working in the clerk's office told the clerk that was actually doing really good and helping me to to not help me anymore and walk away at the point in which i was asking for her simply to make a copy of the entire record you know no big deal i said i'll pay for it if you just make a copy it'd be great she said okay oh sorry um did you just smack the camera that. what did you do yeah well like, the tripod oh, screw this guy i don't want to talk to him anymore <laughs> <laughs> the uh the tripod's trying to go dead on us or something did the cat walk over the the court or something <laughs> yeah the, well the cats are kicked out of the room usually it's our pit bull causing problems uh but yeah so the the chief comes in and i mean there was nothing we could do it, it didn't matter what we tried to say or anything the guy was dead set on doing something to us and he did um it got way out of control um he arrested me said i was being disorderly just because i tried to explain to him that you know i was i needed to get my record a copy of it at least i had court the next day you know uh, and then he turns to her and he got very physically he grabbed her he squeezed her so hard she had a huge softball sized bruise where he grabbed her and he slung her into the window wall and pulled his taser out and stuck it to her heart and screamed do you want to get tased you know just way out of control um, for no reason. So remember, she was live streaming and that turned out to be a huge issue for them. Is, because um, is the video I'm, I'm looking on your channel, maybe you can point me in the right direction. Is the video of you at the jail? Uh, have you posted that? Yes, we have published that. And the reason that you're having a hard time finding any of the videos concerning the meat kit, let's go ahead and use yours. Yeah, you need to use uh, the reason we're having troubles with or you're having troubles finding it, Larry, is because uh, JJ Scarborough, the elected official for the jail, he has been using the YouTube uh, policy strikes to uh, stop my First Amendment. He has been striking all of my videos off of YouTube. Wait, but hold on, your video's original content, how can he strike you for using your own original content that you recorded on mm -hmm. your own video? I'm confused. That's a good question. So, um, Cause I YouTube guess... is very strict on those policies. All you have to do is say appeal and two, three days later, your video is gonna be back. I suffered the same, when I was, I'll give you an example. When I was streaming the the Johnny Depp trial, which by the way, I'm, I have my my Johnny Depp mug. There's, there's uh, Tommy Hendrickson, there's Johnny, there's me. There's Joe Perry and, uh, of course, Alice Cooper from the Hollywood Vampires when I was in Germany. But uh, I'm drinking out of this. I love today. that time. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, I've been struck by a much, much worse. I, it was actually not original content. It was law and crime. And I was restreaming their stuff. And they said copyright strike. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm providing commentary. 
and I won and, 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 and a bunch of other YouTubers, law tubers, whatever you want to call us also won. So they, they failed miserably. And that was their original content. Yeah. Okay. This was their cameras in the courtroom. They're the ones who put the cameras in. They're the ones who keep dropping them into their crotches. Like you are. They're the ones who kept screwing. It up. I'm just kidding. They're so the ones sorry. Who kept screwing it up. That's okay. Just find like a, a, a surface or like hold it or something. So we don't yeah, we will. <laughs> anyway, we've got, we've got we'll one that's it. not battery. <laughs> so the, the question becomes, the question becomes, you know, if this is your, like my camera, right? On this phone, let's say I'm here recording something and then I put it on YouTube. Who is going to copyright strike me that, how can he copyright strike you for your original content? I don't understand. Yeah. He's not copyright striking. What he's doing is privacy striking. He's, they, they've, they've collectively come up with this. It's, it's not the right way. They're abusing the policies and procedures, especially as government employees, because we have a First Amendment right. Um, and again, I believe that it's suable what they're doing. But so they're saying that they're private. They're, they're in private places and they're doing privacy strikes. It's, and I'm talking about the government officials. So the government officials are turning to YouTube and they're filing privacy strikes saying, that's my image on there. And the only reason that I didn't, keep them up, like, like do the appeal, like you said, mm -hmm. is because I was in jail for two weeks. <laughs> so while I was in jail for two weeks, they were able to strike all those videos down. Okay, um, I remember seeing uh, like a portion of, of a video somewhere, and I'm trying to find it now, and maybe you can help me, of well, where you are being, um, like you're being detained by a, a police officer in Meade County and the cop is saying you have an outstanding warrant from Hardin County. Do you remember this? Oh, that was that was why I was in court in Hardin. Was that one? <laughs> that was a different case. That oh, that's a different case, but it's also yeah. one of your videos recorded. By it you. is one of my videos, and and that was why I had to go to Meade County in the first place because I was fighting that uh, alleged warrant from Hardin County, Kentucky, from nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> from 1990. Okay, so tell us about that. Why is okay. 2023 October? So wait, so this is not October 17th. When did you go? That's when you went to Meade County and mm -hmm. you were roughed up, you and Tiffany. I interrupted you. I apologize, but I'm trying to get the timeline straight for our audience. When did you get that? You have an active warrant out of out of Hardin County from 1998. When did that happen? Uh, that was just, no, it was on New Year's Day uh, going into 2022, right, Tiff? Yes, I believe Yeah, New Year's, uh, it was a day after New Year's, so the 2nd, uh, January 2nd, 2022. And, and January 2nd, 2022. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what Continue. I was doing in that video, um, so those that are familiar with my channel understand this, we're kind of like a victim's advocacy. You, we utilize our, our platform. After we exposed what happened to us, in a raid back in 19, uh, or I'm sorry, 2019, you know, once we kind of exposed everything that was happening with the government locally with that case, we started getting reached out to by people that wanted us to use our platform for cases that where they were suffering government misconduct. So we started doing that for people. And one of the first cases that I did that with, that I utilized the channel with, uh, was a, a guy that whose son was I believe to have been wrongfully imprisoned uh, based on the charges because a video had been almost a year after the incident, a video got released to the public that they didn't use in court and needed to because it proved that a lot of the allegations for his charges were not true. Uh, but more so, my concern was in this video that came out, the police hit the kid in the face and legs and body with a mag light, a big, huge, like two foot long mag, mag light, uh, flashlight 28 times. Just beat the tar out of him. Uh, do, you, do you know who it is? Josh Tyler was the kid's how, name. How do you know him? Well, his father reached out to me. Okay. After the incident. Um, but actually, I kind of already had met Mr. Tyler, Josh, the kid, once because he had applied for uh, to work for me for my business, for my construction company. But that was how his dad had my number, I believe. So, but anyway, he reached out to me and he said, you know, there's a federal investigation on this. My son was beaten, you know, I really want more exposure for this, mm -hmm. you know? So I said, well, I'll be more than happy to, 
to expose it more. Sure. So I played, you know, use use my channel to play the video to to kind of bring the the, the subject to light. Um, and I learned when I got a little heavier involved, I learned that they the police, the Kentucky State Police at Post Four were basically running the family out when they tried to do grievances, when they tried to put on record complaints on the officers that were involved. Mm -hmm. So I said, Hey, I don't have no problem coming with you. We'll, we'll put them on blast. You know, I'll go with you and, and we'll do it together. So I strapped on my equipment and we went to Kentucky state police post four and about 45 minutes of them denying us the ability to do the complaints. Uh, you know, of course they, I don't know if they when, probably don't. When was this exactly? That was January 2nd of 2021. January no. 2nd 22. of 2021. You're sure it's, it wasn't January 2nd? I want to put words in your mouth because I mean, I did some research on this, as you know. 2022. You're sure it's not, you're sure it's not January 2nd, 2023? Um, yeah, because, well, wait, it might, yeah, you know I what? I think it was 23. I am so sorry, 23. Yep, it okay, was. Okay, because I was like, I, I have some, I, I remember that date, the January 2nd date, and we'll go over it in just a moment, but. Um, I wasn't expecting to talk about that, so I didn't have anything noted. <laughs> but no, yeah, no, you're, you're totally that. fine, man. I'm I'm getting you. You know, I'm catching you blindsided because I'm a lawyer. This I'm a, I'm a lawyer, investigator, you know, publicator, I, whatever you want to call it. You know, so to me, this yeah. is all um, this is this is all new stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you doing some research on this too, and I expected that you would because you are a very good attorney, and you're not just coming in. You know, uh, do you do you say slight cuss words on your channel at all? Uh, what the fuck do you talk about? No, oh, I don't, okay. I don't yeah, fucking well, I swear on my would... channel. No, I, I don't, don't fucking dare in. swear on my channel. If you fucking swear <laughs> one swear word, I'm going to fucking ban you from my channel for fucking ever, okay? Oh, I better right, not cuss. I'm done. I'm getting off. I, I better not cuss because it is definitely rated PG over here. <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway. I knew you wouldn't come into the subject half-assed, so I appreciate that you did your research. Of and course. thanks for assisting me on, on the date. Um, it was. It was January 2nd, 2023. And so tell so, us what happened January 2nd, 2023. You get arrested. Well, that, that that's what I want to tell you. So I'm I was trying to to do a complaint on one of the officers that were involved in that beating. And all of a sudden, you know, after well, I shouldn't say all of a sudden, it was 45 minutes in. 45 minutes of them trying to get rid of us and telling me, well, you look like that guy off of YouTube. And of course I didn't identify. I'm smarter than that, Larry. Mm -hmm. And, um, they, this officers, you know, a, a uniformed officer comes in and I just knew it. I was like, Oh no, they brought someone in off the road. This kid's going to try to give me trouble. And he comes in, he says, you have a warrant from 1999 over a marijuana uh, cigarette. <laughs> from 1999 a warrant from 1999 over a marijuana cigarette over a joint yep and and i had no clue what they here. were talking about they didn't even have my name spelled right on the warrant you know i it, it is how do you spell is, your name uh, your last name is it r-e-i-t-e-r or no correct yep okay and the warrant that they had uh at the time was spelled it was like three letters different r-i-t-t-r-e or something like that but and i thought okay that's not my warrant anyway like i know the case never happened measures, i've never by the way who measures weed in grams isn't it like a quarter ounce or am i am i too old school in high school we called it like a dime bag or like a um what do you fuck i forgot what the kids called it um like can i get a dime bag that was always like ten dollars right or a nickel bag right. it was like a five dollar bag I, I, I don't, this is how we measured weed. Is it, is it different now? Hey man, can I get a gram of weed? Like what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Your guess is as good as mine on this whole case. Cause like it never happened. Like what they were alleging never happened. There was no, there was no case in 1999 involving me in Hardin County, Kentucky for, for drugs, you know? Um, so I was shocked. I didn't know, you wait, know, wait, wait. at the same time. There was no marijuana case at all. That never happened in my life. So I I I, I was baffled. I, I just thought, okay, wait, wait, I know wait, what wait, you're wait. doing. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. Never in your life have you been charged with marijuana in 1998, 1999. Never in my life, period. I've never been charged with any kind of drugs, never any alcohol related charges. What's never your in my worth? Life. 10 to 1977. Okay, I'm about to share something on screen. I please follow along with me, okay? Because I'm I'm very very confused right now. 
Can you see this? I can't. Let me know if you can see this. This is your public record or not. Okay. You're saying it's not you. Now I'm very confused. So please help me understand here. Hardin County District Court Commonwealth versus Christopher L. Ryder filed on August 21st, 1998 as a misdemeanor. I'm just reading it to you since you said you can't see it. With Honorable Janet P. Coleman, that's the judge. Uh, it was disposed of on September 23rd, 1998. So about a month later with the same judge. This is not an official court record, but it is court net. This is the system that we use uh, to pull up. I, I can go to the courthouse, get the official, but this is right 99.99% .99 of the time. So I trust what I'm seeing. You know, there's a case number. This is all public. Anybody can literally look up lawyer, non-lawyer. They can look this up, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Case memo. There's like a, a flat file fee that, you, that somebody paid November 17th, 1998. Uh, and there we go. So the parties, this is why I asked you, I was like, do I have the wrong guy? And, and maybe I did, but now, no, you told me October 2nd, 1977, um, your old driver's license number from Indiana. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, I didn't have a chance to redact this, but this, I mean, this is, this is all public, you know? So yeah. all, all this information, anybody can literally look up. And now I'm, I'm just, please, please clarify for us because, uh, you know, there's your old address there. Um, the criminal summons from August 27th. You know, uh, David J. Uh, Ratcliffe Police Department, because this is Hardin County. This is not Meade. Hardin County, David Evangelista, the complaining witness with Ratcliffe Police Department. There's their address. You had Clay Thomas in, uh, I don't know, that may have come later, but Jamie Halfley may have come later. I don't know when these attorneys came in, but mm -hmm. uh, Hardin County attorney, Hardin County attorney. Uh, you had a lawyer, Vincent Morris. He withdrew back in November 29th, 2023. So this is this is newer stuff. And these are the charges. Uh, absurd possession of marijuana. You know, it's just weed, man. It's it's 1998. Is this not yep. you? No, I, I. that's what the whole case is about. So I had to go to court because I had no idea what this case was. It's It, it never happened to the real life me back in 98 or whatever. And the address, it, I've never, I had never heard of the address that they were using. There was a lot of problems. Morgan Street, lot 2461 Radcliffe. I had never heard of it. Uh, not until I had to go up in court against this case. Um, so there was a lot of problems. You know, it, for the longest time, Larry, we thought, well, maybe someone had stolen my identity. Uh huh. And, and maybe had been at that address. You know, and another thing, you know, I don't have any kids. And do you have any brothers? The, do I know I had a brother that passed away when I was really young. Um, but I don't have any kids. And if you read the report, you know, you probably don't have access to this, but uh, and I'll gladly share it with you. But if you read the original report from Angelista, he says that he uh, was, was supervising a oh, department. Angelista of was the, the arresting or not arresting, but the charging officer. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The officer on the record that was the, the, the alleged charged, charging officer in that case. Mm -hmm. So uh, according to his report from 1998, he had gotten a call to assist the Department of Child Services to go to the address that you see on that on that court record and that there was a call for the welfare of a child. Well, I don't have any kids and I was dating a girl back then that lived in Radcliffe that had a kid. So her and I went and pulled all the records in the entire state of Kentucky that would involve any type of child welfare call on that actual child mm -hmm. on the, the girl that I've dated back then's child. And then we also asked them to run anything involving the girl that I dated back then. And, and my name, both spellings, the, the incorrect spelling that they originally had, and the true spelling of my name, along with my social security number, you know, they ran my, through my date of birth. They said there has never on any Kentucky cabinet been any sort of record involving you, the girl you used to date back then or her child at all. So okay, I don't so know. Wait what a minute. So hold on. So you're saying because I'm very confused. This was part of your file, right? This is part of your file. So you're saying this is what this is fabricated. This is. Clearly, you're saying it's not you. I got that. I got that much. Yeah. But who would fabricate your name and date of birth? And I'm just curious. Like, do you know anybody who might impersonate you like this? This seems just really odd. Well, I mean, as an attorney, you know, like yeah. I just I've never seen anything like this before. I, I have represented one guy 
who had like um he had his license or whatever somebody was using his driver's license they got pulled over and they they his wallet got stolen so they used his identity to get a traffic infraction i've seen that mm. but i mean well, like, that's we, what they, i actually thought did you, like maybe lose this... your license or something like how did you how did they impersonate you so well and gone to court on your behalf because this is let, let's let's keep going let, let's jump forward real quick to the um let's see so september 14th you or you or your imposter are arraigned in front of judge janet p coleman you're saying you've never been to court no i've never okay. gone to court in hardin county before all this and then pre-trial conference was scheduled for september 23rd at 10 a.m you're saying you did not go to this scheduled pre-trial conference well uh, what year are you talking about back in the 90s 1998 we're sorry we're still no. in 1998 it should be on your screen if you don't see it uh, my screen's too little to read it, Larry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're okay. That's that's why I'm reading it with you. Okay. So September 14th, 1998. Just follow my lead, okay? Mm -hmm. Then there's a pretrial conference scheduled a week and two days later. So we're still on, in 1998, 10 a.m. Judge Janet P. Coleman, September 23rd, 1998. There's a pretrial conference. You're saying you did not make an appearance at that pretrial conference, correct? No, not at all. Okay. And then there is, and the September 23rd, now we're back in the, the charges portion, there were three charges against a person calling themselves uh, Christopher L. Ryder with your date of birth, your, and somebody in the chat was like, did you just post this driver's license number? Look, fam, you can look this up. This is all public. There is no, there is no anonymity for your driver's license. I'm sorry. You know, your race, he's white, you know, sex, male, eye color, or, or yes, please. Uh, eye color brown, hair color brown, weight uh, or excuse me, height six uh, six foot tall, and at the time you weighed, according to them, 160 pounds. You know, so this is all public. Anybody can look this up. This is I don't have to be a special lawyer. Blah blah blah. You can just go to the the Kentucky uh, 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 system and type in you know type in this case number, and you'll see it. So there's no there's no doxing. I'm not doxing anybody. I promise. Right. Um, and I'm approving all of this anyway. I, uh, there's nothing. Yeah, so, okay. So let's get back. I, I'm just, I'm appeasing chat because chat is getting a little feisty. We have, we have a lot of, we have a lot of heat because we, we have a lot of supporters, but you also have a lot of detractors. So yes. I'm trying to, to get like everybody, everybody on the same page. Okay. So, uh, so in 1998 on September 23rd, somebody calling themselves Christopher Ryder pleads guilty and gets a sentence on September 23rd, 1998. Costs, man, the court was really cheap back then. $76.85. Uh, they get 30 days in jail, but 30 days are suspended, also known as conditionally discharged. And you are, uh, you or uh, Christopher Ryder, the, the imposter, gets supervised probation for two years. What does that mean? To those of you who don't practice law, this means... The person who accepted this plea agreement said, I am, uh, you know, voluntarily pleading guilty in exchange for a dismissal of the drug paraphernalia charge, also on September 23rd, and um, supervised probation for two years, meaning uh, drug screens with caps and um, CPD other, what is that? That's uh, child, no, that's not child protective services. Uh, because children would not be involved, it's just marijuana. And you didn't have any kids in '98 anyway, did you? No, but the but this record and and the reason this record existed, they said, was over a child welfare call involving uh they said that they went to a, so Evangelista said that he went to an an address, mm -hmm. okay, and that he was there for the welfare check of a child through Department of Child Services, mm -hmm. and that he got permission to search the house. And that he found a joint in the kitchen cabinet, and that's what the charge was over. Got it. Okay. Okay. So now let's now that we have this uh, at least more or less cleared up, which I think raises more questions than answers, but we'll come <laughs> back to it. Um, tell us. Continue the story. So this year, this is now January second, uh, twenty twenty three. Which, by the way, the reason I know that is because. The warrant on you was executed right here. Uh, yeah. Served on January 2nd. You guys can see it on your screen. I'm talking to the chat. I know you're having trouble. But uh, criminal summons issued originally, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. And then you had a warrant. There's this red section. You can probably see a giant red line on your screen. You see that? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it says return served bench warrant. So bench warrant means when you are issued to come to court, you don't come to court. And the issue, the bench warrant was issued on August 16th, 1999, almost a year after the case was over. But then 24 years later is when they finally actually serve you. Mm -hmm. So served on January 2nd, 2023. So let's go back to January 2nd, 2023 and tell us what continue the story so the cop comes in you're under arrest oops what's going on what happens yeah well I, obviously he's telling me about this warrant that i had never heard anything of in my life so my thoughts were all right are you making this up so that you can get me out of your lobby because we're trying to make a complaint like what's going on here um and i didn't get an opportunity to to learn i had a warrant apparently so i was going to jail and that's what happened um so they took me to jail and then basically my life has been kind of really hectic because I have to do all of the research through documentation to understand what I'm being alleged of what I'm going to court over because it didn't really happen to me. So like, I don't, I didn't know, uh, it wasn't simple for me just to walk in and argue the case. I tried to Who do it on my own. Foster? Why would, why would somebody impersonate you? Do you think, you know what I wonder? And, and this is just, I don't know. Like I can't, I can't answer that perfectly, you know, because uh, I, I don't asking, know the answer. Like, you know, the only reason I ask is because it's lumped in with all your cases. That's why I'm asking. Well, I, I mean, the best I can do is give you my uh, closest opinion on on what potentially happened. If if there really was an imposter, it could have been maybe one of the the girl back then had been cheating on me a lot. <laughs> That's that's what broke us up. I found out she'd been cheating on me with, with people. So now is, is that uh Georgette that you're talking about? Yeah, but I would prefer not to like drag anybody else in if that's okay with you. No, I, I'm not, I'm not going to drag her in, but th the only thing that I want to discuss with respect to that case. So that's what really spiraled this out of control. Is that correct? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That was just so. So she was just someone that I dated back when I was 19 years old, 18 and 19 for a very short period of time. We're adults now. Life is completely different for both of us. I'm sure I don't keep up with her. I have no interest in any type of contact with her and I don't want to drag her name through the mud. Uh, she didn't choose to go to YouTube. I did. So right. I'm trying with respect to them to not add, you know, to do anything that drags her into it or the guy that she was dating back then uh, when she was supposed to be dating me because that guy from what I've been told recently uh, passed away a, a while back. So I don't want to disrespect a person at all. Um, but I thought, well, I mean, we were all teenagers back then, right? So I thought, well, maybe she and him got in some kind of trouble together and maybe she had one of my IDs. Maybe. And I, I have no idea. I mean, again, I'm guessing. Wait, because in 1999, you were a teenager? Weren't you like 22? Uh, 99, I was 19, what not, I believe. 99, I would have been 20, 19, 20. I'm, I'm uh, 46, is that right? Why are you looking <laughs> I'm getting old. Sorry, I I'm losing it. So, hold on. You were born on October 2nd, 1977, right? 77. Yep. 87, okay. 97, I've been, to, oh, you're right, 21, 22. So you're 21, 22. Okay, sorry, I, yeah. I, I got distracted. Okay, continue. In, 90, in 99, so 98, I would have been uh, 19, and or I'm sorry, 20 and 21. So to me, though, that's really young, <laughs> you know, um, and I have oh, no I, idea. I get it. I, I was a dumbass when I was up to until maybe age, I don't know, 34, and that was last year, so I feel you. Right, yeah, I'm still a dumbass at, a dumbass at times, Larry. Um, but yeah, so, so to me, I'm thinking, well, maybe back then in the twenties, you know, maybe it was just one of them things where they used an ID. But again, I have to guess because I am not, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. It wasn't me. I mean, I've spent, if it had been me, this would have been something so easy to just conquer because it's over a joint from 1998. I would have gladly accepted that misdemeanor charge and moved on and not spent thousands and thousands of dollars defending myself in this case. The reason I've done this, spent all this money and time is because it wasn't me. And I do not believe 
in in lying just to satisfy uh, an allegation that's not true. I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm going to stand up for the truth. Okay. So, I mean, it's just a silly case, but I mean, it means something to me because I'm being accused of something that that never let happened. Me, let me ask you this, because this is where things get really, really messy. So maybe you can clear it up for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you get into this little scuffle, whatever it is. I don't care about the details. I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus, especially Georgette or you. I don't care. This is why I, even though I don't have to redact it, I redacted her name just because I, this one, even though it's all public record and anybody can look it up, I'm kind of responsible. It's my channel. It's on my screen. You know, there, I, I, I have limits too, believe it or not. Um, so, so this case happens, you know, uh, this is you, right? So this is yes. you, correct? That is me, right? That is you. So Christopher Ryder, date of birth, October 2nd, 1977. We still have the same, you know, race, white, sex, male, uh, hair color. I don't know what HL is, but maybe you changed your hair color. That's fine. Uh, or eye color, excuse me, a uh, hazel. Um, I can't read. Hazel, hazel, I guess. And I thought it earlier it was like a different color. So maybe it is a different person. Wasn't it earlier? It was like a different it. color, different eye color, wasn't it? It was brown, brown. That I've was never thought I mean, that before, what you just brown, thought. Brown and hazel. I mean, I guess they're too close together. If it was like blue and black. I mean, I'd be like, all right. But anyway, uh, let's 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 just keep going because I'm. this is fascinating to me, like what, what they're doing to you. Um, cash for a thousand bucks. You posted a thousand dollar bond. Uh, it was set on April 5th. I think you were get you get arrested over this, right? Yeah, I got arrested over that one. Right. Okay, so you got arrested. Uh, you got arrested. The incident happened on April the 4th. Uh, bond is set the next day on April the 5th. And then you post it. You post the bond April 5th, 1999. Uh, cash for $1,000. Does that sound right? It, not to me. So I, of course, I'm trying to remember back 25 years ago. But to, to my knowledge, I do not remember any bond at all paying any sort of bond. Now, I'm not saying now, that maybe they somebody didn't else offer. posted it for you. Is it possible? Again, I, well, I don't know. So that's what I'm asking. Yeah, it's possible that someone posted a bond. But here's the thing, Larry. I didn't get out of their jail. I served jail time on on that incident. And there was only one incident that occurred in Meade County in 1999. And I served the jail time all the way through until, you know, the, the, the hearing was over. How the long final was hearing. I don't remember. I, I remember it being long enough to uh, draw several drawings, which I'm not a great artist. So uh, I had actually accomplished making several drawings. I had visitors that came to the jail. Um, I mean, I, I, in my mind, I think it was like 30 days, um, but I can't get records to find out what it truly was. And now I don't even trust the records that are there anymore, you know, because. So if I were to tell you that you served, if you did serve, assuming that this is incorrect and the bond was not set and posted on the same day as, as this record on, on uh, our viewers screen shows, if I were to tell you that you served no more than nine days, would you say that is inaccurate? Well, I got a little short story for you. When I was oh, like, nine or 10 years old, I, I was riding a, a, a dirt bike that didn't have an engine. And it was down this really huge hill that ended in a 90 degree turn. And then it had this big steep embankment that went on and on like a cliff forever. And I, I really remember it well, riding down this really super long steep hill and then crashing at the bottom and falling down this big cliff. And now that I'm a grown up and I've seen where I had the accident, <laughs> it's a very short hill and the cliff is not all that big. It's just a like a small ravine. But I broke my collarbones in that. And in my mind, I thought it was way bigger in my memory. So no, that's fair. I'm not I'm not trying to ding you on your memory. No, I know. I'm just I'm, I'm answering simply your question. asking like because, again, I, I'm look, I am a complete outsider coming into all this. You know, Craig Hendry told me, help my buddy. I'm, I have you on my channel because I want I want to know what happened. I just want the truth. That's yeah. all I'm looking for. So right. if you don't remember, just say you don't remember. It was so well, far no. long. Larry, it was 25 years ago. How the fuck am I supposed <laughs> to know? That is a legitimate answer in my book. I will never, ever hate on an officer who says, Mr. Foreman, I'm sorry. I don't remember. 
You know, if yeah. I, even if I think he's lying, and if I know he's lying, you know, well, I want to answer to I'm the best of my ability. Be like, I'm still going to be like, officer, if you don't remember, tell me you don't remember. You know, so, yeah. okay, so you don't remember. And if, according to the records, okay, I'm just going off of what I have. You're saying this is you. So this mm -hmm. one with the with the date of birth, Christopher Ryder, uh, you're not sure about the bond, even though it says cash, a thousand bucks posted, uh, set on April 5th, posted on April 5th. You're, sure, you're not sure about that. Maybe somebody else, maybe we don't know, but this is you. You're supposed to keep 500 feet away from George Jed, who at the time you were in some sort of relationship with. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, according to the records, April 5th, 1999 was when you were arraigned. Then they moved it a couple of days, probably because you were released. This is very common. Again, I'm a practicing attorney. This is Kentucky. So for me, this is very, very easy in the sense of I have personal experience with exactly that. You know, client gets out of jail. Then they they don't have a court date, you know, immediately then and there. They will push it back for a couple of days. So the arraignment in this case was originally scheduled for April 5th, 1999. And then it was rescheduled for April 7th, 1999. So it's still the arraignment. Whether it happened or not, we don't know. But what we do know is that you were definitely arraigned on that date because the next date is next week at 1 o'clock with Judge Time Lively. And that's a pretrial conference, at which point you pled guilty and you received a suspended sentence. You got credit. And this is what I find the most interesting. You're saying you served 30 days. You were no. sentenced to... Sorry? No, I, that's what I said. Between the 9 and 30, maybe I'm not remembering the amount of time that I was in there. I, In my memory, I felt like it was around a month. But in reality, it could have just been 9 or 10 days. That's okay. what I was trying to say. Okay. So, and again, the court record here shows observed, you know, assault, fourth degree, minor injury. We're not here to talk about that. It's just the case, whatever. It's old 25 years ago. Guilty disposition. So you pled guilty, correct? That is correct. On April 14th, 1999. Does that ring any bells at all? That sounds exactly when the time frame and everything is correct. Okay. Uh, sentence the same day. They The cost amount, 105 bucks to the court. And then here comes the jail portion. Jail, six months. Again, five months and 29 days suspended. Supervised probation. We've seen that before. Two years. Credit. And this is what, what I, I, I'm very confused about. Credit for time served one day. They're saying you served one day in jail, not more. And that is not true. <laughs> okay. And why is that not true? Well, because I know I served more than one day. I may not remember if it was 30 or 10, but I definitely would have known if it was only one day. There's, there's no way that's true. You can't even, I couldn't even draw that many drawings in one day. I don't know. I've seen your drawing. <laughs> She's picking on me uh, for my bad drawing. But no, I, 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 I remember where I was in the jail cell. I remember how many nights I remember playing so, cards. So, so in court, when you appeared in court, you were in shackles and in an orange jumpsuit on April 14th, 1999. I made the mistake of assuming that if there was a video that I would be in a jumpsuit and shackles. So a lot of people are holding that against me because I said that out loud on my channel. However, my, my, what I meant to, to relay whenever I said that was, I know for sure that on the final day of court, I came from the jail. And later, uh, the video, finally, it's an old VHS video. We finally got that released uh, from the clerk's office at Meade County. And in it, I'm wearing the same exact clothes as the day I was arrested. So... Now I kind of feel like, you know, a lot of people are holding it against me because of the, my choice of words saying, you know, I guarantee you're going to see me in orange jumpsuit and shackles. Um, I probably so shouldn't this, use that. Basically what you're saying is this, this is incorrect. The, the court record is wrong. Credit for time served one day is incorrect. It should say somewhere between nine and 30 days, right? That is correct. Yes. What you Got just it. said. And then uh, no uh, PO, I forgot what that means. Uh, this is old language. Like we don't use a lot of this language anymore. Uh, no contact, probably stay 500 no feet away from order, No contact. So no what? No protective order, no Protective contact. order. Yeah, they don't use this acronym anymore because we, now we have IPOs and DPOs and protective orders are renamed interpersonal protective orders and domestic violence orders. So good catch. Yeah. That's, that's, Good for you. I are you are you an attorney, Tiffany? No, I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. All right. So, so let's get back to the main event. So you are based on this stuff. Somehow you get arrested and sent to Hardin County jail on January 2nd, 2023. For one night. Correct. Over a warrant. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, so this is the video everyone is talking about, by the way, let me, let me share a screen with, um, with the chat. So this is the video that you talked about that is not, um, let me see if I can pull it to the right place. The video of my arrest in Hardin County is on my channel available. If you want to use that, it's Meade County. I'm having a problem with not Hardin. Right, right. No, no, no. I know. Um, this is the April 14th, 1999. George Christopher So that's Chris walking in right here, but something sure seems off already. That this is what you're talking about that people show that in the courtroom at the time back in 99 in the Meade County case that on the final hearing, I'm in an orange jumpsuit and chains. <laughs> so I didn't bond out. Oof. Already. Yeah, I right. know. I, like I said, I addressed that already, you know, and we're still in litigation. So if you look at the clothing that I'm wearing, one thing that does make sense to me is it's the same exact clothes as the first video that that is the day that I was very first arrested. So the very first time I saw the judge. Um, and, Let's keep um, and another problem, oh, go ahead. No, I'm listening. Another problem. What? Go ahead. Well, another problem was, is that, um, the, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought, but, oh, the other problem is, is that when the clerk did release these records, she said there were three videos, not two, and only two have been released. So I really need to know what's on that third video. That's big, a big problem I've been having with Mead is that they Wait, seem which to be video? Carried uh, would have been all three of my court hearings in Meade County. There's three, uh, according to the clerk and everybody, there's supposed to be three. And she said she only had two of them available. So only two of the videos what have been released. Is the third video is what I'm asking. I don't know. You don't know what date the third video is from? Nope. She didn't tell me, but it's somewhere between no, but the you, day you, I was You're the one requesting it. So what did you request that she said, we don't have it? I requested all videos of the case at all every record that existed on that case period okay all video all anything from the jail i requested any um type of security camera footage they may had i requested their um sign-in visitor lists anything that involved me i requested phone calls phone call recordings that may have been involving me um everything i requested every single bit of record that they could possibly come up with which might have been why it was taking her longer than a couple of weeks to get it going Okay, so let, let's watch. Okay. How are we doing on the criminal charges? He's going to go ahead and have you put it on. Uh, Commonwealth's going to recommend. I was guilty of it. Raise your right hand, Mr. Ryan. Do you swear to say that you may be the truth and nothing but the truth, say, I think I'm. Do you understand you've got a right to a jury trial, got a right to confront witnesses? And just real quick, um, this this is you yes yes that's me right okay that's not my video but no this is the courtroom video but i'm asking if if this is your lawyer standing next to you i don't remember a lawyer i don't remember that i can't verify what it is but it looks like that's me i was the goofy looking tall skinny kid yeah do you think it may have been a prosecutor maybe oh i would say that that would have been oh i don't you talk about the lawyer i don't know i don't remember Okay, but that's that's not an imposter. That's you. That's me in the gray. In the okay. gray. Okay. Sweatshirt. Got it. Right. You swear to say that you may be the truth and nothing but the truth. Say, I think I do. Do you understand you've got a right to jury trial, got a right to confront witnesses against you, such as the police officer in the state here when you plead guilty, you have those rights. I said you got a right not to testify against yourself when you plead guilty. Give up that right. You admit you're under oath to guilty of assault on the fourth degree. I do. Are you under this by alcohol or any kind of medicine or any other substance here today that keep you from understanding what you're doing? Have you ever been treated for mental illness? No, I haven't. 
Again, in this guilty plea, freely and voluntarily. Yes, I satisfied Mr. Scott's services on your behalf on his health terms. Oh, okay. So he just the judge just asked, are you satisfied with Mr. Scott's services on your behalf? So you it, he, the judge is saying it is your it is your lawyer. Is that incorrect? I don't remember, Larry. It's been so long. I don't remember the lawyer. Uh, if you don't remember, that's fine. Okay, let's keep watching. Did you discuss the plea with him? Oh, listen. You said that his services is your lawyer on this assault charge. Yes. Of course, after guilty plea and the right for day. Six months, Your Honor. Uh, if you're going to give him credit for time served, the rest will be probated. The conditions to be applied by terms of the domestic violence. How many days did you get? You got one. Okay, so judge is asking how many days did you get your answer is one and the attorney says he got one you're saying this is not correct i'm saying that there was minimum eight to, to 30 days that i spent in mead county jail back then that is that's what i'm saying so, so there's the, another the video in court okay. and so you're watching a, a, a video that was created by a guy named uh gentleman named dummy kruger and what you're watching is some evidence that has been released to the public not to me um by well it was to me too but but to the public separately from me that which is i'm fine with but there are supposed to be three videos three court hearings not just two and since i only received two and mead county clerks are telling me that there are only two videos available I chose to wait before I was going to publish this stuff until the third video was available because I want the answers just the same as everybody else. So, and but what I am saying is, is this case happened, the one in 1999 in Mead County. I'm not proud of it. I've admitted it my whole life long, but this case happened. And I'm telling you that I spent several days or a significant amount of time in the jail over this misdemeanor case in 1999. Now, I don't remember the court process. I don't remember the process that happened, but I have a clip that has not been published on anybody else's channel yet, which I would assume since I've got that clip that other people probably have that clip too. Now, remember, I'm still what's, waiting what's on the judge's- Wait, hold on, pause. What's in that clip that, that In you that have? clip, it sounds to me, well, not only is there a discussion going on behind doors at the courthouse in one of the hearings, they're talking about their electricity went out and uh, they're talking, they're whispering under their breath. That, that there sounds like maybe people that is court staff is like talking about some kind of subject it had to have been about me because I wouldn't have got it in my record request, but I can't make out. I can't Wait, distinguish word for word. What electricity saying. went out. So who's recording? Is it recorded on a on a private recording device? Is it recorded no. through the courtroom audio system? How is it court being system. recorded? The yes, court, court system. system. So how is the court mm -hmm. system audio equipment working and behind closed doors and with electricity out? I'm confused. They were talking about the electricity had previously gone out in the recording. I'm telling you what's on the, the tape. On the tape, there's some women sitting in, in behind some type of closed door. It, it's obviously courtroom type of room. So it might not be the actual courtroom, but it's like right maybe a, a one of the, I don't know what's behind those doors, but it's mm -hmm. like one of those um, uh, rooms where they have meetings and stuff, it looked like, like a conference room. And it ha it has to be about me. Like wait, the but discussion. Court, wait, hold on. How did you get a recording of that? There are no, those are not recorded. There are no cameras in those. I've been to like 80 counties out of the 120 that we have here in Kentucky. I've never in my life seen a camera. And even if there are some, sometimes they like, they hold court in those conference rooms. Yes. But if there's nobody attending to them, if, if the court hearing is being held in open court, how did they have a camera in there? They don't have I'll, cameras. I'll just, send you the, I'll just send you the video and you tell me what okay. you make of it. No, please. Um, please. I'm very interested. Yeah. So, so, cause I received four discs. From Mead County, in my request, I received four discs. Four discs, okay. And what's been published all over the internet is only on two of those four discs. And then there should be a whole nother court case, according to the Mead County clerk, that she did not have. She said she didn't have the ability to get the court recording of the third uh, trial. Did you say why? Third. She didn't. No, they never tell me why. That's part of the problem. I'm just asking. Hey. 
Yeah, no, they like our no, equipment. They, that's broke. one of I the mean, problems. Was, I, one time I had a, I'll tell you this real quick, this anecdote. I had a trial and um, I asked the court reporter or not the court reporter. We don't have court reporters. I asked the clerk to rewind the tape because a, a, I had a cop basically literally in the middle of my trial contradicting his own previous testimony, literally direct examination, cross examination, redirect examination. And he is a hundred percent lying. Like I got him in a perjury, a hundred percent. And I, I was like, I got him. I nail him and ask him the question. And he's like, uh, no, I didn't say that. I'm like, yes, you did. Like I have the notes here. He's like, no, I didn't say that. I said, yes, you did. He said, no, I didn't say that. I said, okay, one moment. And I went to the clerk and I said, do you mind rewinding the tape? And she had to pause the recording uh, on the, it's called the jabs. I forget what the acronym is, but it's like the judicial audio video surveillance. I think I literally just fucking said it. Jesus. Sometimes <laughs> the brain amazes me. Jabs, the, the just judicial audio video surveillance anyway, or system. And in that case, long story short, um, we played it to the jury and the jury acquitted my client. Cause they're like, this, this guy's a lying sack of shit, you know, and, and my client walked away free. So, okay. So you're saying there's another tape that they're not giving you. And now this tape is also wrong because there's another tape from behind closed doors that contradicts this right here. That's what you're saying. No, I'm not saying this tape's wrong. I'm not but, saying this tape's wrong. So this I'm is saying, correct. How many days did you get? Chris says one, you say, you know, uh, 21, 22 year old Chris says I got one day and attorney says he got one. So this is correct. Yeah. So can I tell you what the other video is that people are not publishing that yeah. I do have? Okay. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll send it to you to show you. The judge gets angry with me and I'm wearing those clothes right there. The judge gets angry with me and says something about um, not having, I didn't have a key. I think I said something about, I didn't have a key to my house and the, the one of the sheriff's deputies was going to go to my house with me so I could get some clothes so that I could leave. And because this was, uh, this was, I caught her cheating on me and, and it, it wasn't good. So we were parting ways. Okay. Th that's what the case is over. Can we, I, I, I'm not trying to get an exclusive here, but is there any way we can play the tape maybe now? I'm sure the audience would love to see it. Uh, I, it's on a disc. I'd have, there's, I can send, can I send it to you? Cause I don't have yeah, a yeah, way to play it, it now. Me. Send it to me. We'll, we'll play I would later, love to Chad. play it right now for your channel because, and actually I've been, you see, like I said in the beginning of this, I'm doing this even knowing that it's putting me under some major scrutiny because I have actually been advised not to talk about this case. So I'm actually not very pleased with this situation, but I'm doing it anyway because I couldn't be more of an honest guy. I couldn't be more wide open with my life and I couldn't be more exposed of a person that allows myself to be exposed. So to be honest with you though, all of this was advised against me doing, and that's not what this, this video was supposed to be about. So I'm okay with it though, Larry, like I'm okay with doing it no, because I'm honest. For sure. I mean, th this but, is, I'm, I'm telling you, this is courtroom footage. I mean, granted it's been edited a little bit. And yeah, yes, I understand. It is, it is um, but, but let, let's, let's, let, I want to finish this one real quick. I just want to finish this one okay. and then let's get back to you. You'll be sentenced to six months in jail probate after the one day you served the rest of the time probate for two years. No other public defense, no contact with Ms. Garcia. And there's oof number two. Recall. Okay, so that's, that's, that's what I wanted. That, that portion right there. Okay. So now um, let's get back to, to this one because now this is where things get hairy for me. And maybe you can clear some things up because I'm, I'm very confused, right? So you're saying there is this warrant for marijuana, fucking weed. Nobody cares about weed except for the government. <laughs> Only the government is the one to take away our rights, take away our weed and take away our, our rights to weed. Um, I'm, I'm a supporter of green. Any, anything that grows out of the ground that you can literally pluck and, and put in your system, I'm all for, right? Anything that has to be chemically modified, eh, probably not. More, more than likely, I'm, I'm against it. But so leafy green, like whatever, you're 22 years old, you're, you're smoking some dope, who fucking gives a shit? But at the end of the day, what we talked about previously, you said this imposter was, this was not you, this is this imposter that received the 30 days in jail, suspended sentence, and this imposter received the two years supervised probation. So far, so good? I mean, I'm reading the same court case you are. Yes, yeah. okay, so we're on the same page. This imposter using your first name, Christopher Ryder, your last name, date of your date of birth, October 2nd, 1977, uh, driver's license number, which is either the same or different now, 
uh, you know, height, six feet, weight, 160. So it's the same, uh, it's the same stuff that we saw in the uh, domestic violence, you know, the, the assault case. So I'm only using that for comparative purposes. And, uh, you know, there's the bench warrant. There's a bench warrant issued on August 16th, 1999. So what is that? This is what I wanted to ask you. On August 16th, so this is this is the timeline of this imposter's case, okay? Uh, they are picked up. Uh, I, I don't remember if they were actually arrested or not. I can't that anyway. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't remember... I don't remember. I, I don't think. I think they were just charged. I think they were just handed a citation on August twenty second, nineteen ninety eight. Because I don't see an order of commitment. And the next, the, the only document, the first document in the record is like September twenty third, nineteen ninety eight. So this imposter is uh, is being charged, and he pleads guilty on September or she. I mean, probably a he uh, pleads guilty on uh, September twenty third, nineteen ninety eight. Okay. So far, so good. You're following along. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're okay. saying imposter, which I'm not certain of that either. I don't know, you know. Well, but I would assume. Okay, so if it's that not it an imposter, the then it, it, do you think it might have been you? No, I know it wasn't me. I'm saying you know imposter makes more sense than just a completely fake record, though. Got it. Okay. So, uh, so you, you, as you already uh, agreed, and and you don't have any question on this topic that this uh assault case that you pled to on april 14th 1999 happened correct the assault case happened yes the assault case happened and you pled guilty as we just saw on the tape april Mm -hmm. 14th 1999 okay so here's what it triggers this is i'm gonna i'm gonna clue you in on something that uh only attorneys probably know i mean you don't have to be an attorney to know but it's easier if you've been practicing law, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, uh, August 16th, 1999, four months and two days after this imposter, I'm sorry, after you, after you um, plea guilty, they moved to revoke, assuming it's you, this probation right here. 30 days on the shelf, 30 days suspended, 30 days in jail, 30 days suspended, supervised probation for two years. So September 23rd to April 14th, September 23rd, 1998 to April 14th, 1999 is like, what, seven months and a half, give or take? So it's within the two-year period, okay? And this is what triggered, this is why they arrested you. I'm about to, like I said, I'm cluing you in. This is what happened to you. I'm literally teaching you new stuff. So, so yeah, thank carefully. you. Keep going. So this is what happened. This imposter, right, is on supervised probation. So he or she has to report with drug screens to the Kentucky uh, monitoring system or whatever, the CAPS. I forget what it stands for. They used to have CAPS. Now they have like CAMS, uh, C-A-M-S, I believe, in, in Hardin County. So this is very typical. They're very common. They've been doing this for decades. So this imposter is on, he's got shelf time. What happens when you have shelf time? Shelf time means if you violate your probation, because one of the conditions, I'm sure we'll find it somewhere in here, no new arrests or violations of the law. You probably can't see that, but it's on your screen. The viewers can see it. No new arrests or violations of the law is one of the terms of probation for this quote unquote potential imposter. So because of that, you... You, you, on April 14th, plead guilty to the assault on April 14th, 1999, seven and a half months after. And four months after that, this is where it is. This is what you've been waiting for. August 13th, 1999, the prosecutor files a motion to revoke probation, thinking, as you're saying, it's you. To revoke the 30 days that you have on your shelf. That's it. That's easy stuff. August, you, this imposter, uh, September, I'm sorry. August, this uh, this imposter gets charged with weed. September, he pleads to the weed. Seven months later, you, who they assume this is also you, uh, get uh, charged and convicted because you plead guilty to the assault, whatever. And then four months after that, one day shy, actually, one day shy after that, August 13th, 1999, so uh, four months minus one day, 
there's a motion to revoke your probation now because that's the same name, same last name, same address, same phone number, not phone number, same driver's license number, same uh, age, hair color, eye color, uh, uh, except uh, the I, actually, I, I take it back. The eye color was one was hazel. The other said brown. That's the only difference. That's the only discrepancy between these two cases. Um, so they want to lock you up because they think that we, of course, because your name is on it, like we said, everything is on it. And boom, uh, 30 days to serve, they revoke your probation. And they scheduled for a hearing on August 16th, 1999. That is the next uh, line right here up at the top. August 16th, 1999, nobody shows up to court. So the judge, here we go, now we scroll up. Boom, look at that, the dates match. August 16th, 1999. Remember this date when we first started this video? And then you were later served on January 2nd? There it is. This is the piece of the puzzle that you were missing. This is the piece of the puzzle that you were missing, Chris. Are you following along? Uh, yeah, I'm following you. This is very interesting. Okay. Okay. So, so this imposter using your name, address, et cetera, et cetera, on August 16th, 1999, does not show up to court on your behalf. And because it's not a felony, because it's just a, a misdemeanor case, like um, were you living in Kentucky these 25 years? No. You were living where? In Indiana. You were living in Indiana. Okay, so because you were living in Indiana, they never found you because you don't drive on the roads of Kentucky. You're living in Indiana. You're driving in Indiana. And that's probably why they didn't, you know, serve you because they're not looking for you. They don't give a shit. It's a fucking revocation on a marijuana charge. Nobody gives a shit. It is just a, a, a revocation on a marijuana charge. And so for 24 years, for 24 years, you have this just looming looming over in the ether and when you need them the day you finally needed them you came to the court of clerk and was like hey may i have uh uh may i have court records of the stuff they're like hey buddy uh we just looked you up you have a warrant outstanding warrant for your arrest and you're like who what that's not me that's what happened this is what happened right well yeah but you're mixing two different things um i what mean am i missing well, no, when I went to, when I got arrested for the warrant, I wasn't in Meade County. I was in Hardin County. I was at post four, Kentucky State Police Post. That's when they served the warrant from 1998. It was oh, at I'm the sorry. Kentucky. I'm getting my stories mixed up. Thank you for clarifying. So continue. No problem. Uh, continue from where? <laughs> um, you were saying, you were saying that I went into the clerk's office and got arrested, but that wasn't what Whited was arresting us for at all. That was, the, the what was happening in in Kentucky State Police post a year before was the warrant. So, but but I think I'm following you in that you may have answered some huge questions. It sounds to me like the person that maybe used my ID of over the marijuana thing, right? Maybe that person was ignoring whatever the court was sending because mm -hmm. it wasn't his case. And here I was in Indiana, unreachable and no knowledge of that. And the only thing I knew about was what happened in Meade County in 1999. So I didn't know that there would be any reason for a revocation because I didn't break any laws after the incident that happened with Georgette. I just went back to Indiana to my productive life and, and built myself back, you know, and, and grew from the situation. And I wouldn't have known that there was any issues going on over there. So I'm wondering now if you've made sense of their reason for putting the well, look, look, look what happens. Look what happens. Let me let me fill you in on some more stuff. Right. So this 24, 25 year old warrant is scheduled for a hearing on January 3rd, uh, 2023, a year and two months ago. You, I assume, hired a lawyer. You either hired uh, Halfley or Thomas Clay. It doesn't matter. They, they scheduled this probation revocation hearing. They rescheduled it a couple of times, January 9th, March 6th, April no, Well, that's all me. I went to all year. those. So you yeah. went to this imposter's court hearings? I went to the hearings that, that I was arrested on a warrant over, of course. You know, this is the first time I've heard of it. I'm not going to run from the law. So, <laughs> you know, if they're, if they're saying that there was a case from 1999 that I need to resolve, my resolution was hiring attorneys and 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 telling the truth in court so you know 
Uh, We've Mr. spent a lot of time. Mr. Texas uh, making up sure. a, a really good point. Maybe we can get uh, the booking like mugshot of this uh, on this case to see the original mugshot from 1998 so we can figure out who actually has been arrested because maybe we can find the culprit. We can actually find this quote unquote person, that imposter that has been using your face. We okay. went down that road. Do you not want to catch this motherfucker? I would. Well, we went down that road and they told us that nobody was actually arrested. Therefore, there was no mugshot. So oh, that's right. It was a ticket. That's right. I, I already said that. You're right. You're I right. wish that's there really was because, you know, or yeah. fingerprints, you know, anything to that nature that could be pure proof. You know, I, I, I want to know just like everybody else. Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's keep going. So, um, so it's reset a few times, reset, 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 reset over and over. Finally, on November 29th, 2023, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Moore, by the way, who is a prosecutor that I've been in front of many, many times, um, has this hearing. Do you remember this hearing from November 29th last year, just four months ago? Yeah, that's my current attorney now, T. Clay. T. Clay. Let's watch. You, uh, you were charged with uh, assault, fourth degree domestic violence in uh, uh Brandenburg or Meade County in 1999. Is that correct? Yes, in 1999. Uh, you were arrested or in Quebec. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, and this is testimony under oath that you're given right now. I, I don't mm -hmm. recall the actual charges. Sure. Just that. It's an exhibit there. Uh, and that's Judge Reed, by the way. I, I love him. He's he's being appointed special judge on this case because he was a great he was a great judge. I love him. He's so good. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, you were released from jail on thousand dollar cash bond. Is that right? That is incorrect. That it's is not correct. correct. Okay, right. Because it's on a bond sheet. So the one thing that's in that record says that there was a bond paid of one thousand dollars. Guys, I didn't pay a bond in that case Hi, baby. i didn't leave the jail until the whole case was concluded i was or after serving the full amount of time from the time i was arrested until the time the judge decided the case there was no release for no bond because i can assure you Hi. and i have plenty to back this up i did not bond out so therefore there could not be a paid receipt for a bond with a signature uh, on the 1990 case in Meade County, it can't exist. Um, is that the bond paperwork that you signed in 1999? Yes, I have been questioning this paperwork. It is easier to conceive that somebody potentially went 50 miles over to another county and put this paper in or something. So I didn't you, know. The answer is no. I did not sign it. That does not look like a signature. Okay. All. Okay. So you acknowledge the case, the charge, but you deny signing paperwork to get out of jail. Well, I didn't get out of jail. I, not until after the final hearing. I didn't bond. If you're not following, there's two counties involved now. Two. Here's the deal. So they're saying that. Um, that I signed a paper in that Hardin, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just did it right after I told you not to do it. Um, in the Meade County case, they're saying that one of the records in that case file has a signature on it. And they're alleging that that signature matches the signatures that they have in the Hardin County case, which I believe has been completely fabricated. And I don't remember the charges, so I can't verify those either. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, do you remember you were charged with some type of assault charge? I don't remember the charges. At all? I don't remember what they were on, on the case. I do not remember the charges. You know you were arrested? Yes, that's, that's true. You don't know what the charge was? I don't remember the charges. I really don't. Well, if the record suggests it was assault, do you dispute that? Um, no, I wouldn't dispute that it could have been. Okay. 
You mentioned a girlfriend at the time. What was her name? Georgette. Okay. So, um, if the document says cash po bail posted thousand dollars, five hundred feet away from Georgette, does that ring a bell? Does that sound like the case you're involved with? You're asking me if that's what's on the document. I think that's what's on the document. Does that? I'm asking you. Does that ring a bell? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm misunderstanding the question. Yes, that's what this says. Okay. Uh, call that from that case. From the case. Yeah. Yes. So when I left court, I agreed to have no contact with her. Okay. Um, but you do not believe you came back to court on. A couple of weeks later or nine days later sir i was already in the jail and and came out from the jail to that court date but i did not bond i didn't even have the money to bond nor did i even try to get out of that jail i did not try to get out of that jail i served the little bit of time that was there i wanted to show that in the courtroom at the time back in 99 in the mead county case that on the final hearing, I'm in an orange jumpsuit and chains. <laughs> so I didn't bond out. Oh, okay. All right. Is that what the video shows? We're waiting on the video to come back. Okay. I'm sorry, Judge, I took this. That is what the video will show. Right there. That okay. So, um, with respect to what we just saw, that was your testimony under oath in the Hardin County revocation hearing on November 29th, uh, 2023. So just a few months ago. Recently. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you had the case reset in front of Judge Reed uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, February 27th, 28th, and 29th. They're submitting, and this is active litigation. I'm not going to ask you about it. But it's this case is still pending. Am I correct or is it over? I don't know. I still don't, don't know. know. Let you me look know. at the date. No, actually, I don't know because um, I contacted the clerk in Hardin like three days ago, two, three days ago. Mm -hmm. And they said that um, they sent the information to my attorney and I haven't talked to him yet. So I don't know. Uh, the, what I thought that they were saying they sent was the judge's decision, the result. So do you know more than I do? I, that's what I'm asking. I look here. I can show you that because I'm not here to play bait and switch. I'm here to share the truth. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, yeah. I mean, that's right what it's so, all about. There's the that. This is why you're here. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm going to court. I'm going to court for this. Right, right. So November 29th, you were in court. This is the hearing that we just heard, and uh, Mr. Moore, the prosecuting attorney, doing the probation revocation hearing. And uh, Mr. Clay, your your attorney uh, representing you, seated to your left, even though you're on the stand at that moment, correct? I'm sorry. Th that was the – just say that again. The video that we just watched like mm -hmm. 10 seconds ago that we mm -hmm. finished was from November 29th, 2023 in the afternoon, correct? That sounds correct, the date. Okay, let me, let me show it you. It was recent. My most recent hearing. Yeah. Or actually, no, no I, don't I, know. I, I don't know if it was your most recent or not. Let's I, one right after that. I don't want to put words in your mouth. OK, no, it's OK. I'm just I don't remember dates that perfectly. So, you know, when you're asking here. me exact dates, I'm not no problem. I'm not no in problem. court right here. now. So I'm not sitting here with, you know, prepared for dates. Do you see do you see on, on the video? On 1129, the video, 1129, yeah. the 322, 53 p.m. Does that that's sound what right? I would go by. Yep. That's, that's that sounds by. right. <laughs> okay, cool. That's that's what I'm doing. Okay, so now we go back to the um, the case history. This is the case. This is the case, right? For some reason, I guess originally it was scheduled over Zoom, but obviously you didn't do it over Zoom. You did it in person because the hearing was in person, right? Are we talking about the Hardin County case? Yes, uh, yes. we did it in person. I didn't even know there was a Zoom option. Well, sometimes there is, but usually it's only for. Um, it's only for um, what's it called? Um, like non hearings, like if you're just making an appearance. Uh, I mean, we've done during COVID, we've done some some hearings, but anyway, irrelevant. So February 27th, February 28th, February 29th, for some reason, this is literally two weeks ago as we sit here today to the day. Um, Judge Reed 
uh, this is scheduled in front of him uh, for judicial notation, for submission to be submitted to the judge. So this case is still ongoing. Does that sound right? You have you said you haven't talked to your lawyer in the last two weeks. Two days, and no, um, I don't know if it. I think it's still in limbo on wedding. The last I had in court, the way it left was the judge said that he was going to talk to another judge that works at Hardin County that has been there for a really long time, and just ask if if I look like a person that they recognize, and that was all we were waiting on. Did we get uh, my attorney and I gave the court more time, all the time they needed. Uh, to to do whatever they need to do to satisfy the end result of the case. And that's how we left it. That's it. Okay. There's also a, a, a court request uh, and a court order, the record of the hearing from November 29th to be sealed, only to be opened by court order. Do you know anything about this? No. Okay. And then sealed document was filed on February 27th, the DVD of the preliminary, uh, excuse me, the probation revocation hearing, that's PRH. Uh, so the, the, the probation revocation hearing has been officially sealed by the court. Do you know why that is? No, I have no idea. Okay. Why would something be? Uh, why, you're, you're an attorney. You In tell me. Opinion. Well, I have no idea. I have no clue. I don't know. Well, what 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 have you ever seen, Mr. Foreman, that would show you, um, like, have you ever seen anything like this in the past? And and maybe in comparison, why would you see that they would do something like this? Usually corruption. Usually. Uh, the only time I've seen it not be corruption is when uh, the lawyers, for whatever reason, make a motion and request it to be sealed because of some sensitive information for some reason. So, for instance, in this case, in this case, I don't know. I have no idea. I just, there's a record to be sealed. But again, I, I don't really care about that. I'm asking you because I'm curious as to what's happening. Because again, if it's an active case, I don't want you to talk about it, okay? I'm simply asking you if you know and if you can share. Because at the beginning of this of this, um, of this, this interview, remember, you said that there's a lot of stuff that is active and I will never push you in a direction that you don't want to go. So please stop me. If at any point I'm asking you a question that you're like, Larry, I don't want to talk about this. That's okay. Well, I'm kind of in between a rock and a hard place because, um, you know, of course, active litigation I shouldn't be talking about, right? Um, right? And at the same time, I have a duty to the people that that are subscribed to my channel, people that have supported us all along, and people that we love and have kind of created family with, who we've been sharing in like a video vlog our entire life. And I'm, I'm very, very, very transparent. You know, if, if I'm learning something brand new one day and I'm videoing, you're going to see me learn it. It's, it's just, I'm very, very open in, in my life with this channel. So I kind of feel like there's some pressure for me to tell everything that is available right here in his head. Okay. This is the last piece that I want to, that I want to play. Yeah, no, cause I'm interested too. And I'm learning, I, I would prefer to learn about stuff that's happening in the, in an open court case behind closed doors. But at the same time, you know, Hey man, if something new's coming out of this and it's something, I'm I mean, just curious, cause this is, this is a lot, this is a lot and we're both learning in real time. So let's, let's watch this final piece right here. This is the prosecutor's uh, argument at the, I think either at the end of the hearing or sometime in the middle of the hearing about uh, the opposing counsel's arguments. On September 14th, 1998, the defendant was arraigned and the case was continued for a pretrial conference on September 23rd, 1998. On September 23rd, 1998, the defendant appeared with a private attorney, B.J. Holy Cross, and entered a plea of guilty to the possession of marijuana. The defendant signed the terms and conditions of probation in court file. On October 8th, 1998, court is heard, the defendant met with Caps and signed paperwork at Caps on that separate day. On November 12th, 1998, the defendant's court costs were paid in court. 
So neither Chris nor his attorney contested. Okay, I, again, this is coming from another channel. I don't want to. I don't want. Yeah, I don't like I want, the play the part of Dunn Kruger because. So what the prosecutor is saying is 100% incorrect about you. It's about some other person using your name, likeness, date of birth, etc. Correct? Um, well, I don't know. The, the, I think the prosecutor is going off of what's in front of him on the record. And, right. you know, what we saw in that portion, now, Dunn Kruger might have saw something else. But what we saw was, for one, one of those dates was a Sunday. There's no court on Sunday. So that somebody was was told to go to court on a Sunday. Uh, what was the other thing that was really weird about that other date? There was two of those dates that you made. Oh, um, the other one went backwards in time. So so if you could rewind that and not listen, to, if you will do me a favor and try not to include the cut up bits and pieces of my different live streams that Kruger did, because what he did was he took bits and pieces as we were trying to figure things out from early on and then he cut it as and then inserted it as if we were saying it as fact but what he's actually done was he cut pieces out of live stream videos where her and i were just learning stuff and going what the hell's going on here and this that and the other so so those weren't okay, meant so to be asserted as facts dummy dummy kruger who made this video is what i don't know i, I don't know what do you mean well, we can't trust him or he's not to be trusted because no, he has I think that he, the truth or what? How would you what would you describe his video? Well, as? I would describe that he cut up his what he wanted to hear and how he wanted it to be narrated into or navigated by other people. It, it's it's perfectly fine for him to take all of my content and and perceive his own personal opinion of 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 all of it but not it was not okay for him to cut bits and pieces out of videos and be unfair about how the timeline actually functioned so it, he he wanted a narrative he wanted to to produce something that that seemed to be in a timeline and make perfect sense so people but that he, are saying in the chat right now that dummy kruger exposed you this is completely incorrect yeah, that's of course that's what people are saying. And we ignore that kind of nonsense because everybody's allowed okay. their opinion. This is Fair America. Enough. You know, Almost. and and you're more than welcome to to believe what you want to believe. But if you really want to see the timeline and what was actually being said, that's on my channel. You know, and that's where Dummy Kruger got the content. Was well, right. from my channel. Uh and and the only way you're ever going to be fair is if you actually watch the channel in the proper timeline, how it went. Because there were things that we oh, were just so you're trying saying to that he he took the timeline and he distorted it to make it make his narrative work rather than he didn't put words in your mouth because he's taking your content like you said from your channel. But if you take something that I said on January third and then you you play it alongside something that I said on June fifth, you know it's going to make it look distorted, is what you're saying. Sorta, yeah. Because here's what I'm actually saying. I'll make a perfect example. Please. So like. And like we, that. her and I would get a records request response. We would get a record in our hand, brand new to us. Never knew what it was about. You know what I mean? Just to, uh, here it is to us, brand spanking new. Just open the envelope. We pull it out. We're reading it. Well, we might go on a live stream and talk about it. And we're learning the stuff that we're reading just the same as the people on my channel are watching. And in that, I'm going to think, I'm going to process it too in my mind out loud. So I'm processing things and I'm going, listen to this, guys. I don't know what the hell this could be, blah, blah, blah. Well, he's taking content from streams such as that, where we were just learning information, trying to process it. And he sort of put it in ways where he's saying it was stated as fact or an allegation. And he, and he cut those pieces and added them into a timeline, which was actually, I mean, his editing is really good. You know, he's got good editing. I just wish that he had been more fair about because he, I know that he had to actually watch the content to be able to edit it because I edit too. And I realized what it takes to be able to edit a full timeline, full video with a full narrative, a full story. You have to watch the content. So being that he watched the content, I'm actually disappointed in that he wasn't more at least provide the information when he cut something from way back when we were just learning 
And he could have said, well, Chris was, was trying to process this information in this portion of the video. But, you know, listen to what the son of a bitch said. I would have been fine with that. You know, what I'm not fine with is that he cut that little bit here and there throughout that whole video and just asserted as, as if I was saying after full knowledge of fact. Does that make uh, sense? Yes, yes, it makes complete sense. So I just want to end on this. Um, you have, and please do not, now, now we're talking live active litigation. Up until this point, it's been in the past, in the past, in the past. We kind of traversed into the territory just a little bit. And that was my mistake because I did not know. I had no idea. So you stopped me and I thank you for that. Um, active litigation, I do not want to talk about. But I just want to say, because this is, now we're going back in time again. We're not talking about active litigation, okay? Um, you have been, as we sit here today, these are all five cases in Meade County. Five. Is that correct? Eleven. No, no, no. Not not charges. Cases. Oh, okay. Yes. That sounds right. Okay. Tiffany's like, not. <laughs> yes, Chris. Yeah, that is yeah, it's eleven <laughs> charges. Job, Chris. I'm sorry. You got this. I love it. I love She's it. She's the Get one that needs to be the lawyer, not me. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So so you have five. This is all I'm gonna say on on this, and, and feel free to, to give us any input. You have five cases and 11 charges between those five cases. So the average of about two charges per case. You have the disorderly conduct and resisting arrest from October 17th when you tried to get your records and you were arrested. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, some sort of, again, we're not gonna talk about it. It's all public record. If people wanna look at it, I'm not gonna put anything on screen. I'm just asking you if this is fact or false. That's all I'm asking, okay? So fact, Chris, not Tiffany, because this is not your case. <laughs> Chris, uh, disorderly conduct, second degree, resisting arrest. You have two charges from October 17th, currently pending in Meade County, correct? That's correct. Then you have another case, January 16th. You have two cases from January 16th. One is harassing communications. Another one is harassment with no physical contact and disseminating personally identifying information from January 16th of this year. Yes or no? Yes, I was walking out of the courtroom and they started me those. No, 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 that's an active case. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Don't worry, don't oh, worry okay. about the facts, okay? Now, number four now. On January 26th, you're also charged with disseminating personally identifying information and harassment, no physical contact. Yes or no? Yes. And then last but not least, on January 22nd, they also charged you with disseminating personally identifying information and two counts of intimidating a participant in the legal process. And that is as it relates to J.J. Scarborough. Yes or no? Just one word answer. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's... At, at this point, I th those are really all the questions I had. It felt like a cross examination for a second. There. It was not <laughs> me too. So I feel lawyer, like I'm being cross examined here. <laughs> lawyer coming out of me, and, and feel free to like you know this. This is this is uh, this is your time, man. So now tell us with those eleven charges across five cases, one of them involving JJ Scarborough. What uh, what can you tell us without uh, giving us too many sensitive information? Because again, this is a live case. I don't want to hear about it. But like, what can you tell us? What what is what does the future hold? What what are you guys trying to do? Not like legal strategy or or facts. What what's going on? What you're saying? The system is coming after you, right? You told me that in an email, right? I'm saying that there are several people coming after me, and and I wouldn't call it the system because I function within the legal system as the the topic of my channel. Okay, we so don't have me. these. Who's coming after you and why, do you think? I think J.J. Scarborough is coming after me. I think Ray Whited is coming after me. Um, I'm not real sure if there are other uh, government the government officers at Meade County that are actually aggressive like they, those two are, but those two are definitely aggressively coming after me. Um, and admittingly, okay, they admit it out loud on YouTube almost daily, right? Maybe. And and then they have some friends and family members who uh, they have been inciting to also harass and come after us. And that not just us, but even, I mean, can I say it? Their kids. Um, there have been things that we have dealt with and we've exposed it on the channel for a long time now that kind of correspond at this point because we've had, it's no secret, we've had troubles with her ex-husband from 12 years ago. Um, the guy's been relentlessly harassing her and stalking her 
and given her troubles her whole life long since they split up. And that guy kind of, he, what he did was he reached out to a channel um, a owner by the name of Michael Kaiser. And this guy has nothing but a history of wrongdoing. Lots and lots of felonies that he's been convicted of. He was indicted for for a, a murder. Do you know this for a fact or is this speculation? It's facts. It's all record. Do you want to look him up real quick? You can use your Google. Well, I, I don't know anything about him. I, I received an email from him or I sent I should say I sent him an email and he responded back. So we we just corresponded literally because I saw his live from last night. I believe he's live streaming this right now as we speak. I think yeah, he, he's, he had this yeah, scheduled he, for 635. So he's probably uh, 35 minutes behind us unless he, he decided to change it to live. I don't know. I haven't checked. He likes to you're play saying that late. he's coming after you and he wants to do whatever, expose you, lie about you or whatever. What do you know what his purpose is? What it, is his mission? I wouldn't say expose. That's ridiculous. He's he's preposterous. We expose us. That's what we do on my channel. We're the exposers. What he does is stalk and harass. And okay. he does so it. he's been stalking we, and harassing you. Absolutely. Have you filed charges against him? We have yeah. Yes. Um, not just charges, but we have been begging all kinds of play different facets of the legal system. He lives in First of all, it took us forever to find out who he actually was because I don't know if you're aware of the the type of personality sorry, of people that, that do it online. Second. Oh, sorry. Hello? Yeah, are you there? Yeah, sorry. My my connection dropped for a second. Um oh. okay, so so you guys are in this feud <laughs> On YouTube and in real life, back and forth, you and and fraud it. No, which is my no, 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 not a few. No, well, it's not a few. I'm using it as a loose term. You guys are basically going back and forth. It seems like. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're wrong. It's not back and forth. It's just forth. He is the aggressor. We tried to stay away from him. We're I doing see. our best. We've filed protective orders. We've gone to the sheriffs in our district. We've contacted where we believed that he lived. At the time, we've reported him to to different facets of, of law enforcement on in multiple situations. We didn't know where he lived. We didn't know what his real name was okay, for the longest I don't know, time. I don't know anything about him. I literally learned. I was today. Do you know that meme? I was today years old when yeah. I learned about fraud at Wang. Wang <laughs> Wrangler. I was today years old when I was when I learned about Fraudit Wrangler, also known as Michael Kaiser and JJ Scarborough. So I cannot say a single word about them because I don't know anything about them. So everything that you're yeah. saying to me is everything is news. I I mean, I know you sent me like that article. I'll be completely honest with you. I did not open it. I'll be completely honest. I did not open because I wanted to hear it from your mouth. I wanted to hear it from you. I wanted to learn it from you because I'm not here to pick sides. I'm not like you did wrong and you did yeah, right not, and you did wrong and you did wrong. I am simply here to educate the public because this is a story, people. I mean, one yeah. of my clients, you know, I can say this because he went public with it. I keep saying this. Uh, Craig Hendry was like, man, you should talk to this guy. And he was one of many. So I was like, OK, so let me bring you on the channel. This is what we're doing. So listen, mm -hmm. I wanna. It, we've been going for like an hour and forty minutes. I'm sure you yeah, got other things that. to do than to talk some some fucking YouTuber on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but I hope I was able to like at least enlighten you on some things when it comes to like probation and and how you ended up in the system. What got you caught in the crosshairs? Which is when somebody pleads guilty. If I'm a prosecutor, okay, let me just explain. This is the TLDR for the chat who may be just joining us. If I'm a prosecutor, you come to me, you have an assault charge. I'm worried, or excuse me, mar well, marijuana charge, because we're going to use the, the facts of your scenario, okay? I'm a prosecutor. You, you, in 1998, commit a marijuana offense. I want teeth sunk into your flesh, okay? I don't want you to just plead guilty, go away, and the next day do the same thing and repeat and become a recidivist. Recidivism is a fancy word for I'm going to do it again. So mm -hmm. 1998, you know, marijuana, I want my hooks in you, the, the hooks of justice for two years. So that's what happened. They had the hooks of justice in this fictional, you know, uh, Chris uh, uh, character. They had the hooks in them for two years. Now, when you, the real Chris, pleads guilty to the assault 99, which is a year later, forget months, we're just, we can talk years, less than 
two years. That's all we care about. I have the hooks in you for two years. The fact that you pled guilty triggered Hardin County four months later going, oh, wait a second. He violated the terms of his probation. He uh, pled guilty on another count when it says no new offenses, no new violations of the law. No new convictions is definitely part of no new offenses and no new violations. Let's throw him in jail for 30 days. That's what you're looking at right now. That's as we oh, sit yeah. here today. Yeah, I understood that. Completely. That's the you were talking about the replication. That, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So now, now we're on the same page as to the the imposter Chris versus the real Chris. Okay. You know what I thought you were saying earlier, which what? I got confused. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll clarify this. I thought you were saying that Meade County that they saw that as a probation violation, and then in that that might have been why I served time in Meade County Jail because. Well, I'm still know. so I, I'm, confused. I'm, I'm confused as to where the, the January 2nd, you said you were in Hardin County, right? The January 2nd arrest, you were in Hardin County. Hardin County. So that's what that's when it happened. You were picked up on this quote unquote imposters uh marijuana charge from 98 because yeah. they saw it was the same name, same date of birth, same. The only thing that was different was eye color, hazel brown. I mean, that seems Almost like it was all every single detail was exactly the same in the in the court system. And they said, this is the same Chris. Therefore, lock his ass up for 30 days because we want uh, a pound of flesh. We want our pound of flesh. Yeah, like, I didn't have any problem understanding the probation revocation, what, what that was about. Um, my confusion is this. Why is there like this issue with like, I don't recall ever having any bond at all. And I do recall spending time in jail. We're, now we're going to Meade County here. Okay. So if you can carry yourself to Meade County and, and try to help me understand this. And, and the whole thing, by the I way, I spent people, time people, in that jail. The people time. saying that, that the, the last name was misspelled, by the way, uh, I did not see any of that. I did not see the they last name it. being misspelled. It was the same. Uh, we looked at it. You, you guys can go back in the video and, and watch it. I, I can I can literally make a copy and, and show everybody because it's. I have the original. We have this. Of the original records. When they altered it. Up, they did go oh, they altered, altered the records. You say? Yes. Recently, on that, you're talking about the probation revocation case. Yes. Just recently, through in court, while we've been in court over it, recently since January second, they changed that. They changed the spelling of the name. They changed the address. Uh, those are the only two things that I know of that they That's changed. The only two things, yes, I, I believe. So I now it's that. now it's wow. spelled my the, as my name is. But if you want copies of those, I have all of the originals. Yeah, and I'd love to send you the DVD that people aren't putting out there. I don't even care if you do, because all it is is it's not really understandable. And I think you need the th I think we all need the third DVD. Yeah, to send really it to know me. what happened. I can't, I can't wait to look at it, man. Honestly, this this yeah, is there's nothing really. You're you're not gonna be able to bizarre. You know what I think. I also what? think that you should send him a copy of the uh, the thumb drive. The thumb drive uh, of uh, KSP. Kentucky State uh, Police. Kentucky State Police. What was on? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, you're talking about my recording. You're not oh, getting yeah, Larry. representation, by the way. For the record, you have a lawyer. I'm not representing you. This no, I know. This is for lawyer. YouTube, guys. I am not representing you. I do not want to represent you. Thomas Clay is a phenomenal attorney. We love I, our lawyer. We love he's you, we he's with uh, Clay, Wal <laughs> Clay Walton Adams, right? Or I, I remember they split. Um, I forget the firm. But anyway. Um, I don't know. I, yeah, we, we are completely... Pete Lay is, uh, I believe, still, if he still works for them, he's a classmate of mine. Pete Lay, we graduated together in 2013, and Pete Lay has been with them, I think, for the entire time since he graduated. Yeah, I don't but know. I can't uh, wait to see it. So whatever you have, send it to me, and I will, yeah, I will have yeah, For YouTube purposes and for your, under, you know, to help you understand, and maybe you'll sure. figure things out that, that we haven't. But just, mean, for the record, been... just for the record, because you said, so you're saying that this, this right here, from Hardin County District Court, the, the the 1998 marijuana. You see, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. The marijuana. I'm only talking about the marijuana right now. You're uh -huh. saying this is not you. They altered the records. Christopher L. Period, R-E-I-T-E-R. -E they altered that. The date of birth, is that original or, or altered? No, okay. So they had the date of birth right. They had the um, driver's license number right. Mm -hmm. the, so got address, the driver's license number right even yes well that's why i thought maybe someone had a driver's license of mine so they had but 
they still had a completely different name spelling. Like it, it wasn't completely this is, different. This is not. This is not. This is. They changed this. You're saying that they changed this. Yes, yeah, so I'm yes. telling you, they changed the spelling of my name yes. in this case on record. And when, this address when, you never lived at, 137 Morgan Street, lot 2461 Radcliffe, Kentucky, 40160. Never. You never lived there in 1998. Never. Not in 1998, not in 1999, 2000, never, ever. I've never lived there. Um, matter of fact, I went there with her for the very first time in my life after we read these records to see what the heck it was about. We spent what did you about find? three hours trying to find that address. We couldn't even find a, 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 anything on that at the address that they were saying existed. We couldn't find anything. And the people who owned the um, the the trailer park, it's a trailer park. The people who owned it the whole time, they've owned it for like 35 years. Mm -hmm. They said that the number that was written on that police report was never in existence in their trailer park whatsoever. So that made it even more confusing because we were just trying to figure out, you know, we wanted to, to at least you know be able to I'm verify it. I think, I think we, I found a way to expose the imposter. I'm gonna I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna get on that. I found a way to expose the imposter. Anyway, do you have any final words before we sign off? Oh yeah, I mean we didn't get to what I really wanted to get to. Uh, which is <laughs> well, which is that I mean yeah. we want to address that there are public officials who mm -hmm. are utilizing YouTube, okay, to harass us. How? And and not just that, but they are conspiring on YouTube. For the whole world to see fictitious charges against me i am in real life suffering serious damages because i'm suffering youtube harassment and the people who are doing it are supposed to be professional government officials and it's not okay for professional government elected officials and chiefs of sheriff departments to be using a youtube channel to conspire literally conspire Fictitious this is a charges. conspiracy to do what? I am telling you that it is, will absolutely fit US 242. And and not only that, but they spent hours and hours and hours discussing how they were going to have me hurt by the inmates if I went to JJ's jail. And I think that's a much bigger story than this little measly marijuana case, Mr. Meter from 1998. And that is what I thought we were going to discuss. And that's the information I sent well, you. No, no, that's fine. It, 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 because look, I... I am all about the truth and the facts, Chris. So yeah. the reason I went down the rabbit hole is because I had 10,000 questions mm -hmm. and no answers. Well, that is hopefully why this you've little... got 990, at least close to your 10,000 answers out of this. Uh, because And not just for I... me, I'm not doing this for me. You know, I, I, um, I'm doing this for, for the, 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 the people. I'm doing this for the people. Yeah. Well, at the I end feel of the like day, we're I'm all sure left with it's content, but I'm sure it's going to be flagged as like inappropriate for uh, ads or whatever. I, I don't, I don't give a shit. My, my primary <laughs> purpose is I have, I have a, no, they they already flagged it because we, we probably mentioned something about court and assault, you know, they don't, YouTube doesn't like those words. Um, I'm sorry. And they don't worry about it. Don't, I, I don't care. Trust me. If I cared, I would have been like, don't say these words when we go, <laughs> live. you know, I, I, I don't care. I, I don't care. This is, this is not, this is not my purpose. So, so basically I, I want to help you find this, this imposter because this is what you're, they're, they're trying. Listen, I don't know why you don't care about this, Chris. You should care about this a lot. This is, this is the biggest story right here. You're saying a man pretending to be Christopher Ryder has gone to court, has done probation on your behalf, has served at least maybe, no, no time, sorry, has paid fines and court costs on your behalf. I don't know. Any, I don't, my best friends wouldn't do that for me, Chris. My best buddies would not go to probation for me, pee in a cup for two years. They would not pay court costs on my behalf. I, I want to know who who's your imposter because that is the craziest story I have ever heard in my entire life. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to be 36 in two months. And not only that, not this is the why don't you care about? They're about to lock your ass up for 30 days over something you didn't do in yeah, 1998. You're me. saying that you had marijuana in your pocket, and they want to lock your ass up in jail. Go the fuck to jail. Do not pass go 30 days. And you're saying that's not me, but I'll go to jail on your behalf. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. No, I'm not. I'm not offering to go to jail. Uh, it matters to me, but like I feel like we've suffered way worse damages than what we're facing in the 
Hardin County thing, you know, like we're in the middle of an active lawsuit where we were the victims of a botched police raid where her spine was broken. I've, you know, my uncle died and he left a motorcycle in a wheel to me and the same police, when they did that raid, they used that motorcycle that he left me in a wheel as an excuse to bust in our house thinking that we were drug addicts and because her ex-husband makes false allegations about us and just fames us all over the, the world. You know, so these people busted in, they stole my uncle who just died his motorcycle and they ended up giving it to somebody else because they're nimcompoops, you know, they're morons and they don't follow the legal process. So we've got that going on. I think that's way more important than what's going on in the uh, well, I guess I'm going to have to have you back on the show to, to talk about this because we're, we're completely out of time. But um, uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your, your tale of woe and enlightening us into all this. And uh, we're, we're uh, almost certainly going to do this again once I find – there's one missing piece that I don't know if anybody has, and I'm going to find it. Uh, and we'll we'll definitely have you back on, man. I really appreciate you, you coming on. I feel like – what we're going to send you will help fill in a lot of those holes. And we haven't been able to publish it because, you know, we can't give that out there to any active to litigation. Any. No, no, that's fine. And, and if it's Go. again, I uh, here's the thing. I 99% I, um, of the time, this is about me and my cases. 99% of the time, I do not ever, 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 unless it's like an innocuous hearing that's not going to change anything. I had one case. Uh, it was like a DUI third that ended up going to jury trial a year and a half later. Um, I posted the hearing because no harm, no foul. Nobody gives a shit. No one's going to come after me like, Larry, you're like, like that's nobody cares. Nobody cares about that right. stuff because it's, it's a hearing, even though it's an active case. But 99.99% of the time, if it's an active case, unless it's like a body cam video where you want to use that as leverage to negotiate with police mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, you know, I don't share on my channel. You have no idea how many hearings I have in my back pocket that I may never, they may never see the light of day because they are either active cases or it's sensitive information. I'm, I have lawyer brain, I have legal yeah. brain, so I know how to separate the sheep from the herd. Mm -hmm. um, not to my own horn, this is just the truth. This is literally how a lawyer's brain works. So when you, whatever you send me, first of all, I'm gonna fo follow your guidance on what is potentially uh, releasable and what's not. Because already, as we saw today, on November 29th, 2023, the probation revocation hearing between, um, uh, and I know the names of these people, Thomas Clay, he's a lawyer in Kentucky. I know, uh, uh, is it is it Thomas Moore? I forget his first name. Uh, Mr. Moore. I know Mr. Prosecutor Moore. I've tried Moore. cases mm -hmm. against Mr. Moore. He is the prosecutor, one of the prosecutors with Don and Melanie and Catherine. They're all there in Hardin County. I know all of them. These are my people. This is my territory. This is my backyard. Yeah. So I can you really should be watching. You. You should be watching the videos where we've been trying to get protection so, and, so and this trying hearing, to get the, the, the November 29th hearing is now sealed. So even if I wanted to go and be like, hey, can I have a copy? The, they're gonna, the court is going to say, no, I'm sorry. It's been sealed. Now, thankfully, so at least one channel, you know, picked it up. Maybe I can get a copy from them if I really ask really nicely. Dummy. What is it? What is his name? Dummy what? Trigger. Dummy Kruger, Dummy Kruger, shout out to you, Dummy Kruger. You know, as I know you don't like him, I know he's biased, but still shout out because I use this content. Please don't copyright strike me, bro. I, I love you, um, but I'm sure he won't. I, I'm giving him publicity. I don't think he gives a shit. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of sensitive stuff going on that's still going on, and I want to make sure that the, uh, that every single person's rights are protected while also allowing the exposure of the truth and 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 stuff without hurting you in in your litigation because obviously you're still mm -hmm. in litigation you have those five cases 11 charges across them one of them is a felony <laughs> charge jj scarborough is involved and he two. appears on fraudster fraud yeah so who's the other it's the jailer right no the two, jailer. two felony charges two felony charges two felony charges one is one is uh, uh intimidating so they're both intimidating uh a person in an ongoing litigation. One yeah, is JJ uh, Scarborough. Who's the other one? It's the jailer, right? People are telling me it's the jailer. No, there's JJ's on behalf of his daughter. He's he's the one that made the charge. Both of them. Okay. All right. Well, listen. Again, it's ongoing case. I don't want to talk about it. I don't. I don't care. This is not what we're here for. Um, I, I just. I thought I had the facts. I guess uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, long and short of it is, um, there is this 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 nineteen. <laughs> I just can't say it with a straight face anymore. Um, 1998 marijuana, Christopher Ryder, who we don't know. Hopefully we will. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And uh, thank you for coming on. We're definitely going to do this again. 
So I appreciate you. Thanks for for all the intel. And um, I am I'm certain that uh, fraud at Wrangler is going to have a field day with it on his channel. He's probably having a field day right now. Maybe he's watching as I'm speaking. So like, hi, fraud at Wrangler's audience. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing and having a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the show as well. I might as well cater to you guys as well. You know, hate me, love me, hate on me, love on me. I really don't care as long as you don't try to love, love me, because then we're going to have a problem. I have a girlfriend and she's not going to like that. Um, <laughs> So I appreciate you coming on. Tiffany, again, thank you so much for being the, the backseat lawyer. And uh, thank you, Chris. I, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your story of woe. And hopefully we can we can get to the bottom of it, okay? Yeah, I'd love to talk to you in another uh, segment or another setting about what I came up here for. And if you wouldn't mind, can I borrow your platform for just a split second to say something to my audience that came? Sure, go um, ahead. I said that we were going to be talking about the Mead County stuff on this this video but, but remember i said i don't want to they're all active yeah no i, I but i'm just going to apologize to my audience because oh. i was incorrect i thought that's what we were going to be doing tonight i have no i, I have really appreciated being able to do what we did i got no problem with that um so nothing against you larry i'm just letting my audience know because they were fully expecting us to uh expose what's been happening currently on my channel you know what what when you're looking at my channel you're talking about yesterday's news uh, when you're talking about the Hardin County stuff. Mm -hmm. So Meade County is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with JJ Scarborough, Ray Whited, and some other actors that have been viciously attacking Tiffany and I and her children. And that's what we told our audience we were going to address today. So to my audience, to the people that came from my channel, we love you all so much. Thank you guys. And we're sorry we didn't get around to that, but I'm sure that Mr. Foreman will talk to me some more later on and maybe we'll get around to it. Okay talk more Most about definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, what was that? I said probably when we can talk more about it. That way it's actually something interesting to discuss. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You got it. You got it. All right. All right, y'all. Thanks for coming on. Be safe. Thank Stay you. safe and we'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. All right, everybody. That was um, for public safety, Chris and Tiffany. Um, Go subscribe. And also, I, I forgot to ask her. I believe she has a channel herself. Uh, wait. I, oh, they're still backstage. Real quick. Uh, <laughs> official misconduct. Official misconduct. Misspelled M-I-S-S. -S. I'm so sorry. Where's my head? I, I've been in lawyer mode all, all <laughs> evening. Don't forget to like this video. Comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe to these guys. Official misconduct for public safety. All right. Now I'm booting you. <laughs> Bye. Oh, man. Um don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have a bunch of super chats to go through. Wow, what an intense show. What an intense show, you guys. Um, this is this is definitely one of the most intense ones I think we've ever had. Um, and especially with such a divided chat. Uh, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is being cross-live-streamed on like several different platforms right now, like as we as we sit here right now. So let's see. All right, Cliff Williams, tell Chris and Tiff I said hi. I think they're they're still in the background so they can hear you. I don't know how long they're gonna be here, but tell Chris and Tiff I said hi and thank you for helping out. Thank you, Cliff Williams. Absolutely. Uh, they just left. Master Sergeant RTL, I love my fraud editor member Wranglership, Chris. <laughs> Like I said, Chad divided. House divided is house with a with a party on the roof. I swear to God. First question of the night, DY guy, have you watched the unedited arrest video, not the Chrissy version? I need copies. I would need copies. I I have seen bits and pieces, but not the not 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 Christopher's version. I've seen it on uh dumb was it was it dummy dummy not dummy Wrangler for God's sake. Come on, Larry, dummy Kruger, dummy Kruger. Dummy Kruger has made like this little mini documentary and Dummy Kruger is, uh, uh, I've seen portions of that video. So I, I like to go to outside sources just because that you're going to have more facts. Exactly, Danny, more facts. That's exactly what I'm going for. Um, so then we have uh, Danny who says Alabama has gas for Alabama, uh, hashtag Alabama has gas for Kaiser indicted by the grand jury for capital murder felony. Wrangler is a 10-time felon and murgler murderer. Ah, okay. I, I don't know anything about that. I don't know if he served time. I mean, even, even convicted felons, 
also, if they've learned from their mistakes and served their time, is I don't know. Uh, it depends. It depends. I'm not holding. I don't know anything about the guy. I know nothing. How can I judge a man? And like all of these things are, are news to me. I don't want to get involved in things that I don't know. So hashtag buckle up. I'm just, I'm getting my feet wet. I'm getting my feet wet, folks. Like, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the messenger. Like, everyone's like, oh, here you go. We got like an angry mob with the pitchforks. Nail him to the cross. Nail him to the cross. Kill him. Crucify him. And I'm like, yo, I'm just the messenger. Like, bro, I'm like carrying the torch over to the Mount Olympus. Like, chill, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know anything. Oh, man. Uh, King Bluto says, thank you for letting public safety get his message out. I, I don't think I did. I think I kind of took over <laughs> completely as if by his own admissions. <laughs> because I have questions. Hashtag I have questions. Danny, thank you again. Helping expose fraud at Wrangler for his crimes. Yes, we got it. Indicted by grand jury. Yes. Uh, Donald Adelwin Cameron. I don't know anything about it. Junior United States Marine Corps disabled vet. More open felony charges. Oh, dear God. I What, what did I get myself into? More lies, says JC Sports Picks. Um, retired Nana. Tell the truth. Watch Dummy Kruger, everyone, which is... We watched portions of it, but I didn't want his commentary. Yes, the, there was. He said it was an imposter. So we we believe as far as far as, as he's saying, I mean, my opinion, this, this is like the weirdest imposter in the world. I want this imposter as my friend. Because this imposter goes to court. He doesn't skip court. This let me let me explain, okay? So in 1998, we have an imposter, and we're gonna use this this um this candy, this little sugary grain as as the weed, okay? So he has he has like a a, a, a nug of weed in his pocket and maybe a pipe because there's drug paraphernalia charges. And this this person, okay, this fictional character goes around and uh, some gets caught by Angelinette or whatever. Officer Angelinette cites him with possession of marijuana, uh, charges him here. I'll show you guys again because this is this is the most bizarre thing. And he's like, I don't care. How do, can you not care about, about a, you're about to be thrown in jail for 30 days on a probation revocation hearing, and you're like, eh, that's peanuts. I mean, I guess maybe, I don't know if he served time or not, but this is so weird. This is so weird. So here are the charges again. Obser uh, observed possession of marijuana. Here's the marijuana, right? So he's got this nug in his pocket on August 22nd, 1998, and he's got a pipe. We're going to use this chapstick. We're going to use this chapstick. Um, this is the chapstick that I use, which, by the way, reminds me to use it. So you got the chop chapstick. We got the marijuana, right? So this imposter, this fictional character has marijuana and drug paraphernalia and, well, that's it. That's it. Those two things. He goes to court. This imposter who uses a fictional name, he uses Christopher Ryder's name, his, his date of birth, his driver's license number, his accurate race, his uh, male uh, uh, brown color hair, everything is matches. Everything matches. Everything matches. Living at this address or, or using this address, whatever, it doesn't matter. With friends like these, who needs enemies? With friends like these, who needs enemies? He goes to court. The dumbass goes to court. After he his arraignment is scheduled September 14th, just a few weeks later, right? So as, as you all can see on your screen, um, I don't want to I don't want to be blocking it here. Let me just make sure. There we go. Um August 22nd, this imposter is charged. September. Where is it? September, there it is. September 14th. 1998, this imposter goes to court and says, I am Christopher. Then nine days later, he appears in court again. A second time. He comes to court at 10 a.m. And pleads guilty on behalf of Chris. And says, yes, this is my weed. Will you please dismiss the drug paraphernalia charges? Let's call it the pipe, the, the chapstick. 
And he pleads guilty to this. Now, Chris, the real Chris, the fictional Chris, we don't know, is placed on supervised probation for two years. He gets a 30-day suspended sentence. He gets a 30-day suspended sentence. And he's on supervised probation. He reports. I mean, you heard that, that video. You heard that video. Um, by the way, I just realized dummy Kruger is a, is a play on words, isn't it? It's the Dunning Kruger effect. It's actually kind of funny. So listen, don't listen to me. Again, I want to play this to you because this is how absurd it is. I'm going to play the prosecutor. This is, this is, um, what's his name? Mr. Um, oh, for the love, I already said his name. Sorry. Uh, oh, come on, Larry. My brain is tired. It's like, this has been a very intense two hours. Um, uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore. This is Mr. Moore. I, I practice in front of him all the time. This is Mr. Moore in Hardin County. Hardin County. By the way, don't forget to vote in the poll. Uh, I have a, a an active poll going. Uh, I have, let me let me check the stats because people have been voting or not voting. I totally forgot about that. I, I, like I said, I, I'm sorry. I got so distracted by 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 the content. Um, hi, baby. Uh, what are you guys here for? There's like 1,500 votes. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Don't forget to go vote. And what, what are you all here for? Okay. Why are you here? Because I'm curious because we have so many channels that are going to be streaming and restreaming this. And, and a lot of the, the, the auditor community is here. A lot of the frauditor community is here. I mean, we are have, again, it's worlds collide on the DUI guy channel. It's, it's crazy. Um, oh, is Chandler in the chat? Hi, baby. She has been sick all day. I made her like tea. I made her um, some more stuff. Where is she? Remy. Oh, I can't see her. If she's in the chat, I don't know if she is or not. Um, yeah, close and reopen chat if you don't see the poll. So don't listen to me. Listen to this prosecutor who's arguing to Judge Reed, Mr. Moore. I respect this man a lot. I've learned a lot from this man. I trust this man to an extent. <laughs> He's a prosecutor, so I can't fully trust him. You know, otherwise I wouldn't be a criminal defense attorney. Uh, although not for long. If I'm still practicing criminal law by the end of 2025, I'm going to be shocked. I'm trying to sell my practice, by the way. If you know anybody looking to buy a practice in Kentucky, holla at your boy. Holla at your boy. I'm trying to sell my criminal and DUI practices and go do First Amendment stuff and... Um, personal injury stuff like car accidents. So like I want to do car accidents and I want to do first amendment stuff. I want to be a prosecutor, like a not not in not a criminal prosecutor. I don't want to I don't want an elected position. I want to be a civil prosecutor. You hurt my client, you break his arm or you silence my client, I will break you. That's what I want to do. I want to be a plaintiff's attorney. That's where my future is. So you heard it here first folks. I want to be, yeah, there you go. I want to be an ambulance chaser. Clip this shit to fucking eternity. I want to be an ambulance chasing motherfucking slime bag. You heard it here first, folks. That's what I want to do. I want to do plaintiff's work. I want to do car accident cases. I want to chase the ambulances I, I, on foot, in a moped, in, in a car, on a bicycle. Give me the mobility tools. I will fucking chase that ambulance until it arrives in the hospital. And then I'm going to be like, sign here, sign here, sign here. Actually, that's very unethical. Don't, don't do that. That is actually a violation of ethical rules. But you know what I mean? When they call me, I've been hurt in a car accident. Want more cash when you get in a crash? Call the, the, the car crash guy. That's what I want to be, okay? <laughs> that's what I want to be. Um, that's what I want to be. So that being said, that's, that's part of it. The other part of it is I want to do more first amendment litigation. This is, this stuff really invigorates me when people like what the hails are being silenced. When people like, um, like, uh, uh, Craig Hendry are being silenced, you know, their, their right to video are, are taken away when their right to, um, when their right to um, uh, record are being taken away, when they're trying to be silenced, that's what I don't stand for. I hate that shit. 
I hate that shit. And I, I don't stand for it. I don't stand for it. And I wonder, I, I helped, I helped Mandu get his YouTube channel back. I helped a couple others, you know, uh, expose uh, uh, YouTube and their false strikes that they were getting. Um, I've been helping people. I like to help people. So you call me ambulance chaser. I say that I want to be the best plaintiff's attorney and recover millions of dollars for my clients. That's what I want to do. If you don't like that, that's fine. If you love it, that's fine too. I don't care. I love my lovers as much as I love my haters. Okay. So with that being said, again, listen to the words of this prosecutor. On September 14th, 1998, the defendant was arraigned and the case was continued for a pretrial conference on September 23rd, 1998. On September 23rd, 1998, the defendant appeared with a private attorney, B.J. Holy Cross, and entered a plea of guilty to the possession of marijuana. The defendant signed the terms and conditions of probation in court file. On October 8, 1998, the court has heard the defendant met with Caps and signed paperwork at Caps on that separate date. On November 12, 1998, the defendant's court costs were paid in full. So neither Chris nor his attorney contested these dates with the prosecutor. Therefore, when Chris claimed, quote, no one was ever summoned to court, or when he asserted, quote, the person never showed up for court at all, it is evident that he was not being truthful. There it is. He was not being truthful. So that's that's what I'm confused about. This is what I'm trying to figure out, and this is where we are. This is why I'm stuck on this whole, he's saying it's not him. He's saying it's an imposter. He's saying, it, and, and like two years on the shelf, then he pleads guilty. This one, he said, this is me. This is me, the April 14th, 1999, this is me. Then they moved to revoke his probation uh, a, a four months later, just one day, or sorry, four months and two days later. They moved to revoke his probation based on the new case. And it's filed a day before. So August 13th, um, four months minus one day. And then four months and two days after, it's scheduled for a hearing. He doesn't show, naturally, because he doesn't know to be there, because it's an imposter, clearly. And now he, we are here we are 24 years later. They're trying to lock his ass up. This is what this hearing was about. This is what everybody seems to miss. This is what this hearing is about. This hearing right here. November 29th, 2023, that we watched. Why wouldn't you contest that? This is not me. This is all fake. This is all false. I mean, he testified to that. But he's looking at 30 days in jail, and he seems like, I don't even care. I, that's not what I came here to talk about. Are you kidding me? I would be jumping to the moon and back. I would be screaming from the rooftops. This is not me, you know, if this is was, if this was true. You know what I mean? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not doing jail time for someone else's pot possession. That's stupid. Why would you want to do someone else's time for them? So I'm so confused. And God forbid, you know, Thomas Clay is a very capable attorney. I'm very positive that he's going to be able to get him a, a successful resolution. I have no doubt about that. But still, still, I am so confused why he doesn't want to fight that. So Kelly W., thank you so much for the... The 10 says, excellent job. Well done, man. Uh, don't buy into this, Larry. You're better than that. Bat S crazy girl. Thank you so much. I, I, you're my new favorite person, by the way. Bat, bat S crazy girl. You're my new favorite person. Like, I'm not even joking. Um, I, I know it may seem kind of weird, but I, I was reading your stuff and your comments. You are you're a real one. You're a real G and, and real knows real. So that's that's what I want to know. Um, what happened with that? You know, uh, retired Nana says, watch dummy crew. Yes, we did. We did that. Um, JC sports picks says busted. Uh, Sandy's a maniac says impersonator paid his fees as well. Yes, exactly. Paid his fees, went to probation for him for two years, got the probation revoked automatically. Cause Chris imposter or real didn't come to court. And then. There's silence for, for 25 fucking years, 25 years, a quarter of a century, and all of a sudden, boom. I don't know. Is it content? Or is he after content, or is this real? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, because now I'm invested. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm curious. 
Um, and I'm making notes to myself because I don't want to reveal it yet. I don't want to reveal what my strategy is because um, I don't. I want to have full range on it. And I, I, I mean, what's his name? Chris. He heard me. I'm, there's no secrets here. There are no secrets. I want to know the truth, and I want to get to the bottom of the truth. That's it. That's all I want. That's all I'm after. People are like, "Well, you're not gonna, you're not gonna side with corruption." Of course not. I am here to fight corruption. That's why we have Judge uh, De Thomasis in Levy County. So that's what we're after as well. That's who we're after as well. Uh, let's take a look at the poll. <clears throat> why are you here? All right, let's end the poll. Um, 20, oh, wait, th does the poll disappear? Oh, come, Larry, you idiot. God damn it. I forgot that it, it kills the poll once I, once I close it. Um, all right, whatever. Uh, it was like a quarter of you said I'm here for, 23% of you said I'm here for, uh, to support, uh, for public safety. 53% of you said, um, I'm here to support DUI guy. It was like seven or eight percent of you said, uh, "Yeah, I have. I don't have a photographic memory, but I have a very good memory." Uh, seven to eight percent of you said, "I'm here to shit on both DUI guy and for public safety." And like twenty something percent of you, I think, like fifteen to twenty percent said, um, uh, "Fuck you and your horse." <laughs> I don't know why it's funny to me, but it's funny. Uh, retired Nana says, uh, "You were arrested on DV holding a gun to this lady's head in front of her small daughter. He had to take domestic violence counseling. Uh, maybe." I don't know. We didn't really want to talk about that. Sandy is a maniac, says impersonated reported to probation and paid the fees. There we go again. Uh, good citizen says every word that comes out of his mouth is a lie. Every worded. Thank you very much for that. Master Sergeant RTL, that's not you, really. Uh, Leo Ford says I'm here to support both channels, but no option for that vote. And for the trolls out there, it's my money and I'll spend it how I want. GTFO, says Leo Ford. Sandez, a maniac, uh, says a video of his 99 court plea on DV charge, which we played portions of. Yes, we did. Debbie, welcome back. Hi, Larry. Thank you for being you. I appreciate that. Sandez, a maniac, says he got his bond money back and uh, domestic violence plea on video. The ex was there. Uh, Danny says Alabama needs to put felony wrangler. Oh, here we go again. On trial, indicted for capital murder for justice for Don hashtag justice for Donald Cameron, USMC disabled vet. Again, I don't know anything about that. Um, bat s crazy girl chrissy is deflecting and starting to get mad uh this is probably in real time but i usually don't read chats in real time uh so i apologize i usually read them at the end or if we find like a good break in the middle um i have spit like all over my mouth you guys i'm so sorry this has been a very aggressive chat um chrissy what's wrong my friend you getting mad <laughs> batch crazy girl you're like hashtag find the imposter help help you guys are like on, on, a, on a scorched earth. I love it. Uh, Amethyst Jones, officiated troll and cult member. I believe I saw you on um, uh, Wrangler's chat, Wrangler's channel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, I want to impersonate, I want someone to impersonate me, pay my fines, go to court on the 10 court order classes seems sus to me. That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. With friends like these, who, do you, who, who needs enemies? I just, this is so confusing. I want to get to the bottom of it. Uh, Armwit Harmony. Blah, blah, blah. Armwit Harmony. Is there a signature on the ticket? No, we don't do those in Kentucky. Great question. That is a great question. Wow, that is a really good question. Important. Ask Chris what happened with the court video from this hearing. Compare it to the What the Hell's court video on YouTube. Yes, we did that. Uh, Fat Gamer Falsax. Larry, I'm so glad you didn't let him lie to you. Thank you so much for this. You're welcome. Uh, Raymond Kaler, thank you so much for the 20. Chris lied to his audience, screaming fake charges, fake reports, fake accusations against two different county clerk personnel. Okay, good to know. Danny, okay. Danny, I, I thank you for the super chats, but like, I, I'm not a prosecutor. You know that, right? <laughs> There's no, I can't, I can't prosecute felony cases. Uh, Dennis Coppert says, I have never watched a live stream with so many bull posts from frauded wanker followers. Crazy about a Mercury says the address where he was cited 98 did not exist. Teresa Lynn, thank you for the five. Badass crazy girl says Chrissy just doxed Wrangler's mom. Uh, Kathy McClure says, wow, does this sound familiar? Retired Nana says there is no more tapes. 
Retired Nana also says, don't hold your breath, Larry. He never provides proof. He says he has it, but he never shows it. We shall see. I mean, now I'm waiting. Uh, Danny says, dick back patrol dummy. Oh, my God. Out the truth to the community. Hashtag felony wrangler for prison 2024. Okay. All right. You're talking about something a little bit different. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> She's just like, make it rain, DY guy. Make it rain. <laughs> Mr. Tech says, I wonder if they could trace the supposed bail money he didn't pay. Hmm. I'm going to write that down. That's a good question. That's a very good suggestion. I did not think about that. Um... Uh, Teronius Blacksimus the Black Dragon. That's a hell of a name. Weird bootlicking defending terrorists. Crazy. Amethyst Jones officiated troll and cult member. Why giving a platform to a liar, grifter, and a fraud? He put a gun to Georgette's head in front of her four-year-old daughter. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Internet killed the TV from WDRN. Thank you. Uh, Wrangler's FBI... <laughs> You guys are so angry. Frauded Wrangler will give you the unedited court and uh, arrested CCTV videos you want, I'm sure, if you ask him. I think we covered that. Thank you so much. Amethyst Jones again. Uh, Wrangler tells on himself he doesn't need anyone to do it for him. Okay, fair enough. Um, um Larry Sieben says, Larry is my imposter besides the white hair and looks nothing like me. And I'm 56. Hmm. Hashtag. Yes, dad. Ye Wait, <clears throat> hold on. <clears throat> yes, dad. Oh, God, please. Now they're going to clip that. Fucking hell. What have I done? Sorry, not sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm so fucking stupid sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm slap happy right now. I've I have some caffeine from my green tea. From by the way, have you seen my mug? Have you seen my mug? Uh, Johnny Depp. I was I was in uh, Germany. I met uh, I met him. We took a photo together. He's a, he's a really cool guy. He's really fun to talk to. He's very down to earth, just like in his movies, just like he was on the stand. He's just like that in real life. This is a real unedited. This happened photo. Uh, which I ordered the mugs for from uh, Hollywood Vampires. Um, thanks for having them on. They do a good job. Thanks, Jimmy in E Town. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Mickey says 1998 charges and 1999 charges are two different guys. Yet each guy has to defend charges for both. Exactly. See, that's what I'm saying. Why? Why is Chris so fine with serving 30 days in jail for somebody else? JJ Kaiser for prison. They don't like journalists. Hashtag FPS. Hashtag one. Two B suck. Seven. Thank you so much. Or VII. I don't know if I pronounce it seven or VII. Uh, Cliff Williams says, look up Jamie Knoll FPS. Took him down. Sheriff of Clark County, Indiana. He has government enemies. Very possible. Uh, Night Knight says, it was a dumbass with a similar name. The records were amended to arrest Chris. Very possible. Let's find out. To be suck, VII or seven. JJ and Kaiser, not fans of First Amendment and news gathering. They hate trifolds and a, five, a, a Fifth Amendment copy car, cop cards too. They now are after uh, for public safety success. Chris, news stories, FBS is a hero. Thank you very much for that. Night Night says, worst charges since the Larry. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Tube Sock 7 says, FPS is a good dude. He never bothers anyone. He reports on the news. He's a journalist for crying out loud. JJ Kaiser and corrupt people keep harassing him. Thank you very much. Dennis Coppert says, Kaiser is way behind you. Oh, is he still live? He's been live for like almost two hours now. He's not way behind. He's like 40 minutes behind. Well, I guess that's way behind, I suppose. Um... But wait, he pauses the video sometimes, right? He pauses the video. He pauses the video. Um, rooting out corruption is dangerous. 
Fuck that shit. I'm going to keep going. Are you kidding me? Uh, Sam Middleton. Thanks for your efforts in all this. Hashtag buckle up. Thank you very much. Uh, Alana Hader just spoke to Dummy Kruger, said he won't strike you. Did you really? Holy shit. Did you re reach out to Dummy Kruger? I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to fangirl over the guy, but like, he's got some good content. So shout out to you, Dummy. Keep up the good citizen journalist. Just make sure if you are editing things out of order, you know, don't do that. But if you're editing things in order, then keep doing it. Uh, he won't strike you. Also, the trailer park address used to exist, explained in the video, was his girlfriend's address. KCP says, I'll put faith in you. Anyone with any critical thinking skills will dismiss Chris and cut ties immediately. He's nothing but a liar. Thank you, KCP. Uh, Bill M says, the record they sealed might have something to do with the prosecutor getting him to give all his personal info on the record and people getting copies, jailer in particular. Oh, wait a second. This is interesting, Bill. Um, the record they sealed. So this is the November 29th, 2023. Um, a probation revocation hearing on the misdemeanor marijuana case that was triggered by the plea to the domestic violence in 1999 sealing of that hearing the record they sealed must have something to do with the prosecutor getting him to give all his personal info on the record and people getting copies oh that's possible it's possible if it's just to protect anonymity and sensitive info then a hundred percent a hundred percent there's no corruption there at all and probably the lawyer asked for it and maybe the court did Amethyst Jones again. Larry, you got all you got to do is ask Wrangler about his past uh, and the so-called murder. He will be more than happy to tell you in real time what he did. He has the receipts for you all. Fantastic. Okay, maybe he's next. I don't know. I'll have to talk to him. Reform Congress uh, says found other Chris Ryder who also lives in the same Kentucky County. Mm. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. Don't wait. What's what's the theme? I was about to play theme from Jaws in my head, um, or Jeopardy. What's the theme for Twilight Zone? Do 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 do. Interesting. How did I miss that? Uh, there, I did not find one. Whatever you found, I did not find. So you have information that is. Um, not in the court system. I don't know where you found this because there is, there is one with a date of birth, May 24th, 1973. There's a Christina, which again, if I, if I, I just typed in Chris, if I do Chris to fur, this is going to limit the options even further. Uh, one lives in Henderson, hasn't had an active case in like five years. Uh, one lives in Campbell, or at least that's where they were charged. Shouldn't say live, but May twenty fourth, nineteen seventy three, uh, date of birth. There's a December seventeenth, nineteen sixty five. I mean, this would be a much older gentleman, you know, in his fifties. Um, and then there's another one in no, that's the same one. So there's like three, but they have a different middle initial. One is a P, one is a J, and one is an L. And this one was an L. And there's only one Christopher L. writer in the state of Kentucky. Prove me wrong. Well, that's being charged. That has been. Uh, that has had charges because I cannot find them. There is no other Christopher middle initial L. I'm not saying there's not another one that lives in Kentucky. I misspoke. There's not another one with charges in Kentucky. A Christopher L. Ryder. Let's look up civil cases as well because this is just criminal docket. Um. No. No, there isn't another one. This, this is all. There's a domestic violence case that was entered the day he entered the plea. That the, our Chris entered the plea in front of Judge Lively. And the same day in the afternoon, there was a, a, a DVO, a domestic and interpersonal violence order entered, which uh, I think he served time on or something. I don't know. Again, I don't care. But it's it's not it's still him. It's the same guy. It's the same guy. So whatever you have found other Chris Ryder who lived in the same Kentucky County, it may be, but he, he, maybe it's him, but this guy was never charged. Unless he used the exact same name, exact same date of birth, had the exact same hair color, same height, same weight at the time, 160, same everything, which would be very suspect. Very, very suspect. But I want to get to the bottom of this because something smells rotten. Something smells fishy. And I want to know more. Um, Patty 
Ox Hulsum says he and Lynette would make great teams. Uh, Shane Graham Yurlock still says mugshot enemies like who, like who needs friends? Exactly. With friends like these, who needs enemies? YouTubers are not just journalists, says the Supreme Court. Thank you, Amethyst Jones. And she also says we are all the imposter. Tube Sox 7 says that case had a Chris imposter different last name. Ah, okay. That's why I can't find him. JJ was in the Zoom for Hardin County trial, says Cliff Williams. That's interesting. Uh, Robert Yonata says, yes, JJ released all of Chris's info on Kaiser's YouTube from that court case video, hence compared between FBS and what the hells. Uh, everyone remember, this is back at handwritten times. Very true. Cop testified that the first one was a ticket was added because of carbon copy. Thank you, Anya Meadows. And also, thank you, uh, Amis and Donna Ditson, as well as James Cochran for joining as a member to the channel. And retired Nana, thanks for being a member for almost a year and a half. Look at that, 16 months. 16 months. So that's why I can't find it. If it's misspelled, then I can't find it. Um, that would make a lot of sense. That would make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you all enjoyed this. I mean, this was definitely, um, this definitely took on a life of its own because I was trying to figure out uh, what on earth has been happening with this case. Um, I know I went in a direction that Maybe Chris didn't want it, but I, I had questions. I had a billion questions and it took us two hours to get to all of them. And I'm glad we did because we learned a lot. And so did Chris. Chris learned how, why he was being threatened with 30 days in jail. I'm still shocked he doesn't care, but you know, like I said, maybe we can find who this imposter is. Maybe we can find who this imposter is. Um, but yeah, it, it should be really interesting. It should be really fun. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I'm going to try. It is what it is. Um, can I help with investigating this? I would love to, says Debbie. Maybe. Maybe. I will definitely reach out to you if I need um, If I need to. But thank you. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I really appreciate you all. I loved the divided chat. It was very divisive. It was very interesting, and um, I hope you all learned something. And I, I know you did. I know you did because this has been a very engaged chat. I don't remember the last time I had such a divided – because even during the Johnny Depp trial, even during the Johnny Depp trial, we never had such a divided chat because there was no real like, go Amber Heard, go Amber <laughs> Like there was none of that shit, you know? Um. So I'm, I'm just happy that the truth is hopefully coming to light. I think, uh, I think we still have some time uh, to go through. And you know what? Just because I, I, I feel bad, just because I feel bad, um, you know what I'm going to do? Hashtag buckle up when you get pushed into this channel. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Oh, I can't. Ah, oh, fuck. It's restricted. All right. Well, it is what it is. Can't have everything. Um, Megan and I are going to be streaming Friday. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. My, my, I've been saying this. Like People are like, hey, Larry, can I talk to you tomorrow morning? I'm like, I can't talk to you tomorrow morning because I'm going to prison. <laughs> I'm going to prison. <laughs> I am going to prison for an hour and a half, but I am going to prison because uh, I need to meet with a client who's currently serving time. Um, it's at uh, Rotor in Oldham County. So DUI guy, hashtag DUI guy's going to prison for an hour and a half to visit a client. <laughs> it's just so fun to say. Like somebody was like, hey, man, can I can I have lunch with you? Like, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I might still be in prison <laughs> come lunchtime. <laughs> it's just too fun to say. I'm sorry. Um for a lawyer, because lawyers lawyers go to prison all the time. We go on a Tuesday. We go on a Thursday. Hashtag buckle up. Um, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to go to prison. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Oh. All right. And, of course, uh, I'm being called out. Uh, you do need to get more information on the FPS situation, a.k.a. this case. You are way too biased. So how is it biased to... To go for the facts. 
Y'all, I went for the throat. Are you kidding me? I ripped this dude apart. I ripped him into shreds. I practically performed open heart surgery on my channel. How is that biased? I am simply go. I want the facts, yo. Tell me how that's biased. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I disagree. I respectfully disagree. I I fucking performed open heart surgery with, when it comes to law stuff because I wanted to get to the bottom of it uh, because I had a 10,000 questions. You heard, go back. If you don't believe me, go back. Even he admitted to it. I hope I answered all of them. I hope I answered at least 9,999. Those are his words, not mine. I'm trying to be as independent and factual as possible. So please tell me how the hell I was biased. I didn't have all the evidence. Okay, fair enough. Not biased at all. Oops, that's not the one I wanted to highlight. I didn't have all the evidence. Okay, but I have the court records on the internet. You want to tell me those are wrong? That's fine. That's fine. I, I want to see I want to see what, what we have. You know what I mean? So... The truth always comes to light. I'm not worried about that. I'm very excited, uh, you guys. We have lots more content coming your way. Tomorrow, what am I going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, tomorrow. What am I doing tomorrow? Hold on a second. What am I doing tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm still waiting on my thumbnail maker to make me a few thumbs because he's been I've, I've been I've been working him overtime. So I don't, don't I don't feel bad if I don't go live tomorrow. We're definitely going to be live Friday morning with Megan doing the fifth hearing and the last one of what the hails. Then, oh, are you guys ready for this? Oh, you guys are not ready for this. Who in the chat knows the random patriot? Shout it out. Who knows the random Patriot? I could probably speed chat up again. Uh, there's like, it's slowed down. There's like a thousand of you in here. I can speed you guys up. Um, here we go. Let's turn off slow mode. Here we go. So if you, um, he's another auditor, the random Patriot on YouTube. He's got like close to 40,000 subscribers. This is him. He did a video recently. He did a video recently on a woman who got her ribs broken. In Massachusetts, trying to exercise free speech. And when I heard that, I was like, the fuck is going on here? So I reached out to him. He's going to be on this channel, on my show, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, March 18th, this coming Monday. So mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. The Random Patriot is going to be on my show. And maybe, maybe, maybe a surprise guest. So brace yourselves because winter is coming. Justice is coming. Hashtag justice is coming. Hashtag buckle up. Justice is coming. Mark Feather! Arr! Am I wearing makeup? Should I? Do I look ugly to you? <laughs> Why would you say this to me? Um, it is not Chandler. It is not Chandler. It is somebody related to the case. Now, I can't make promises because I'm not the one pulling the strings. I'm not the one pulling the strings. No, it is not Trump, although I was 300 feet away from him when I was in Miami. 
Uh, so anyway, stay tuned. I might be live tomorrow, probably maybe with something. Definitely live Friday morning with Megan on this channel. And definitely live on uh, Monday evening, also on this channel with the Random Patriot, who's going to be here with potentially surprise guests. So thank you all for joining. I hope you learned something. I love every single one of you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a wonderful night. And bye-bye-bye, everybody.